chills, we're standing by for the command to start engines for the champion Spark Plug 400. All new racetrack out there with the reins. Probably a very good racetrack, a very, uh, very fast track, I suspect. It's just a matter of a... And now, ladies and gentlemen, with those magic words of motorsports, Mr. Dick Andrews, Vice President, Sales and Marketing, Champion Spark Plug Company. Gentlemen, start your engine. It rained very hard here in Michigan early today. However, no precipitation at the moment. Skies do remain cloudy, however. We hope we can get the entire race in for you this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to Michigan International Speedway. Only 10 more races to go in the Winston Cup season this year. It's a very important race for many drivers because it's the final one on a track two miles and larger. Let's take a look at the point standings. Mark Martin gained nine points last week and has a 10-point advantage on Dale Earnhardt, who, despite six wins, is still second in points. Jeff Bodine is third, 120 points behind. Rusty Wallace lost 89 points last week, is still fourth. He won the race here last year. And Morgan Shepard moved into fifth, knocking Kyle Petty back to sixth position. This track the race drivers like very much. Ned and Benny will be in the booth with me later, but right now they're down on the track. Ned, where are you? Bob, we're in turn four to demonstrate to the fans how wide this racetrack is. The turns are more than 70 feet wide, which allows two, three, and sometimes four abreast racing. Last week, we were in Watkins Glen, New York, a one-groove racetrack on the road course. If you get out of the groove there, you're in the grass. A couple of weeks from now, we'll be in Darlington, South Carolina, another one-groove racetrack. You get out of the one groove there, and you're into the wall. But then at this track, gives them a little more room to operate. You know, Ned and folks, you can be on the bottom group, what you think is the fastest way around this racetrack, slip, go up the hill to the top group, and find the top group is faster. The driver can make a difference here. When the race is over, he feels like he had a big part in winning the race that the car wasn't everything. Over the years, there's one driver who's figured out these grooves. More on that, John Kernan. Well, Benny, Michigan has been a good luck charm for Bill Elliott. You mentioned him. Seven wins in the last 13 races here at Michigan International Speedway. And three of the last seven years, he's come here in search of breaking a season-long losing streak. Now, he has done that in the June races. You recall earlier this year, in June, Bill looked to be on his way to breaking that season-long losing streak, but a blown motor dashed his hopes. But he's back here today, and he is on the front row in search of his first win of the 90s, which so far have been a struggle for Elliott. Now, there's also another driver in the field who's had his problems this year. And for more on that, let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. We've gone for a 1989 season that involved six pole positions and 11 top 10 finishes. The outlook for 1990 for Elliott was great. However, a lot of distractions during the year involved the was moved to a new race shop and the building of new cars. Translated into only two top 10 finishes in the first 13 races. Well, the move to six Now we're beginning to see the Alan Kowicki of old. In the past five races, three top ten finishes, including a second at Daytona and a fourth at Talladega. And, of course, the Bush pole here at Michigan today. That first win of the season could just be around the corner. This, indeed, could be a very special day for the man we call Special K. Bob? Thank you very much, Jerry. The field now begins to move off of pit road. You can see there's some still wet spots in portions of the uh, pit area. However, the track is nice and dry. Now let's take a look at the Sears diehard starting lineup for the champion spark plug 400. On the pole, his first of the year, Alan Kowicki from Greenville, Wisconsin, in the Xerox Ford qualifying at 174.982. Outside row one, seven-time winner here, Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, in the number nine Coors Ford. In the second row, it's Ernie Ehrman in the Kodak Film Oldsmobile number four. He finished second here in June. And outside row two is Sterling Marlin in the Sunoco Oldsmobile car number 94. His best starting position of the year. Inside row three, current points leader Mark Martin. He's in the Folgers for number six. And then defending race winner and Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace in the Kodiak Pontiac number 27. 
starting seventh. The winner of the race here in June is Dale Earnhardt from Kannapolis, North Carolina. The number three, GM Goodwin Chevrolet. Outside row number four in the tight Chevrolet number 17, Greg Sachs. It's, of course, the car that Daryl Waltrip would normally drive. Ninth starting position goes to Jeff Bodine, who was third here in June. He'll drive the Budweiser Ford number 11. Outside the fifth row from Hueytown, Alabama, is Davey Allison in the Texaco Ford car number 28. He won on this track in 1988. Next, inside row number six, Harry Gant from Taylorsville, North Carolina in the Food Lions Gold Oldsmobile number 33. And then Brett Bodine from Shimon, New York in the Quaker State Buick number 26. Gary Cope and Chad Little go in row number seven. The eighth row has Dick Trickle and Dale Jarrett. Row number nine, Bobby Hillen and Kyle Petty. The tenth row, Rick Wilson and Hutt Strickland. And as you look at the rest of the starting lineup, I guess you guys have made the big climb up here to the booth. You're a little out of breath, but uh, welcome to the booth after not being here last week at Watkins Glen. Tell you what, I've made this trip three times today. I'm ready to die. <laughs> Folks, getting to the booth at Michigan International Speedway is a job. Ned, we're going to have to talk about being out on the course here next year. Well, to have 105 steps to get up here, I counted <laughs> several years ago, <laughs> and it does get you out of breath. I've worked on getting myself in condition just to make that climb, but it's good to be back in the booth today, Bob. We have just received word they are going to take one more pace lap before we get the start of this race, so they'll go around one more time. And so while we watch the appeal go down, the back stretch, warming up, getting set for the green flag. We will take a break and be right back with the start of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway. Well, the bad weather we had early this morning certainly didn't hold down the crown, did it? It sure did. All the tickets were sold. Here's inside the Phillips 66 car driven by Dick Trickle. Trickle's still, still trying to recover from the injuries that he had suffered in Watkins Glen, but I think he's going to be able to go 100% today, 200 laps, no problem. We have two other in-car cameras. Here's our Jason Binoculars uh, in-car camera carried by Kyle Petty as he gets set to go. And the third in-car camera will be carried by Derek Cope. Who's that little guy? On the Mr. Purelator, I guess. Oh. We're set for the green flag to field at the end of the backstretch now, headed around. Bob, there was a lot of discussion as the drivers were being introduced down there today about, did you change your car after yesterday? You know, they had a 100-mile ARCA race here, or a 200-mile, 100-lap ARCA race, and the track was close to race conditions. But all of that rain you mentioned came down this morning and has washed everything off the racetrack, and I expect we'll see some chassis a little out of order. It's strictly a guessing game right now for these cars to try to determine what is the best chassis setup. Part of the sellout crowd on its feet, waving the starters as they come down, set for the green flag. Alan Kowicki has the pole position with Bill Elliott outside, and there's the green. A champion spark plug 400 is underway. Yes, Ernie Urban has dropped back in the Kodak Chevrolet quite a bit here on this first lap. going into the turn as Dale Earnhardt just drives his Chevrolet on down, and here comes Mark Martin up on the outside of Rusty Wallace. So the move he was about to make sort of backfired on him, he went backwards. Let's go to John Kernan, who can perhaps tell us what's wrong with Ernie Irvin, who continues to run back. John? I just talked to Tony Glover, Ernie's crew chief. He says they've got a problem. There's a mess in the engine. They're not quite sure exactly what it is. He has the signboard out right now but they're not planning on bringing Ernie in just yet. They told him to ride it out for a few, for a few laps, and maybe it would solve itself. If not, they will have to bring him into the pits and try and fix it. And 
Jerry Punch is down pit road in Alan Pollution Street. There's been a lot of concern here because Alan lost the qualifying and the race engine yesterday with just two minutes left in the final practice session. The engine they have in the car is an older engine, not nearly as strong as what he had liked to run here. He knew he probably would not be able to hang with Elliott early on. That's indeed the case. He has dropped back to fifth spot. Continues to lead. Sterling Marlin runs second. Dale Earnhardt is third. Then comes Mark Martin and Alan Kowicki. And the battle is for fifth position. Rusty Wallace dives inside of Allen and races with him down the back stretch. Looking at number 17 is Greg Sachs for Darrell Waltrip. And Rusty Wallace picks up fifth position. Talked about the different groups. Rusty Wallace is running directly in the middle of the racetrack. We see the green 26. That's Brent Bodine. He's on top of the racetrack. He was very fast in practice here yesterday afternoon. Davey Allison. I'm talking about Brent Bodine. Davey Allison running right behind him. In fact, they were the fastest two cars in practice after the ARCA race. Everybody thought they were going to be the ones to beat. They're hanging in there right now. Well, Brett Bodine with a very strong third-place performance. Last week at Watkins Glen, the 17 car is on the move as he also goes to the inside of Alan Kowicki. That car being driven today by Greg Sachs, and Kowicki has lost two positions in the last two laps. Sachs tried to get position away, and now he does have it. Here again, going by the Jeff Bodine car. They're racing side-by-side side off turn four. 150 miles an hour coming off the corner. Door handle to door handle. Last lap, Bill Elliott ran 171 miles an hour. That means on these straightaways, fellas, he's reaching close to 190 miles an hour. Harry Cope and Harry Gant racing side by side down the back stretch. Wow. Big pack of cars here moving down the back stretch, trying to get sorted out. Allison on the inside. That's Paul Whitney in seven. Harry Gant, Jeff Bodine is in 11. Very obviously, already we have two grooves on this racetrack. One low, one in the middle. It looks like Davey Allison's groove is working very good on the bottom. Look at these cars, side by side. You know, Davey, Davey will be able to get by Kowicki on the bottom of the racetrack. It's just tight racing right here, but Bill Elliott continues to stretch out the advantage over Sterling Martin as we watch. The action from Gary Cope's car. There's the last lap speed over 171 miles an hour. Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. And Dale Earnhardt in number three. That's, That's third and fourth and fifth. Exactly. Right in front of them is Sterling Marlin. He's running second. And Bill Elliott, the red car, is the leader. Now Dale Jarrett begins to move. Pulling alongside of Jeff Bodine at number 11. And Hutt Strickland is right behind Dale Jarrett. As they catch up with the number seven car, Kowicki. They got a bigger hole. We're really moving. Here we have the pole center. But Jared had to back off as uh, Jeff and I tried to pull up and move around Alan Kowicki. Looking out the back glass of the pure later car from Mike Hope. Back to this action. That Strickland now looks to the inside of Dale Jarrett. Strickland at number 12, the car owned by Bobby Allison. Behind him, two abreast racing also as Bobby Hillen in the number eight car and Chad Little go at it. And here goes oh, Rick Woodson. Oh, oh, Rick they Woodson. touch. And Chad Little do touch coming off turn four. 167 miles an hour swapping paint. They both of them did a great job of holding those cars. Here's the battle for second position as Dale Earnhardt has closed in and now begins to challenge Sterling Marlin for second spot. by Bill Elliott. There's the advantage that he has already over Marlon Earnhardt and Mark Martin. Dale Earnhardt looks to the bottom groove for his way around Marlon. But Wallace is back in line as they come to the trioval back to 12 degrees. Rusty Wallace had an ocean but pulled back in line. Now, I realize this isn't Daytona or Talladega, but it's a two-mile track and there is an element of drafting. Sure there's an element of drafting. These cars running nose to tail can run a little bit faster than they can single. We saw the tire smoke off Dale Earnhardt's car as he went on the bottom of the racetrack and tried to turn it. The right front tire smoked a little bit. They get sorted out just a little bit in single-file formations. 
settling down after nine laps of the 200 lap champion spark plug 400 will be back in just a moment international speedway where the battle continues for second and third position Sterling Marlin in second right now but right behind him Dale Earnhardt and then he has competition from Rusty Wallace in the 27 car Rusty was able to get by the six car of Mark Martin during our caution break and Dale is one of those drivers you can hear on the sports 1 900 number all you do is dial 9 900 sports 1 and then punch in the number of your favorite driver or car owner. Now, Darrell Waldrop and Junior Johnson will not be participating this week, but you can hear comments from the rest of the drivers, and you can hear race highlights. Wow! wow. Did you see home. that? Woo. Now, that's how... I mean, this... Oh, man. <laughs> you see the tire smoke off those cars, man? Yes, sir. We'll see a lot of that during the afternoon, and it looks like it might have cost him a little bit right there. The car number 94 of Sterling Marlin. Oh, his heart just started beating. Yeah. <laughs> Had to scare him to death. Yeah. He lost two positions as Earnhardt got around him. So was the Wallace. And now here comes Mark Martin. Here's a replay. Earnhardt gets alongside Sterling Marlin. Now he needs for the car to come uphill. We see the smoke coming off the tires. And he goes up and runs into the left front wheel of Sterling Marlin's car. It's incredible how you can keep control after bumping at that speed. But Sterling Marlin did maintain control. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that car to see if it suffered any damage of any kind. Here's Kyle Petty. Uh, Alan Kowicki continues to go backwards in the Z-Rex Ford number seven. He's probably running about 17th now. Kowicki was the pole sitter of the race and eligible for $15,200 in Unical bonus money if he can win the race. The early stages have not gone well for him. The 27 and cars are running right together on the racetrack. That's Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. Rusty, the defending champion of this race. Last year, he began his drive for the Winston Cup Championship right here and would like to do it again this year. You can see how far Bill Elliott has pulled out in front of Dale Earnhardt in second place. Here in June. In fact, Rob, he led 102 of 185 laps he ran here in June before he blew up. There's the interval back to second place, Dale Earnhardt. Third is Wallace, fourth is Mark Martin. Fifth, Marlin, and sixth is Greg Sachs in the tie, number 17. Here's a run down to the top 30 after just 10 laps of this race. Darrell Waltrip hopes to be back in action by Martinsville, at least. I was just thinking, I bet old D.W.'s back in Franklin, Tennessee, wishing he was in that orange 17. They have the car running good here. I talked to Jeff Hammond yesterday afternoon. Dale Earnhardt got by him. He's drifted back just a little bit. I think that chassis is not exactly the way he would want it to be. And he was running in second position while when that happened. He's now back to fifth and trying to hold off Greg Sachs. Here is Kyle Petty moving to the inside of Dale Jarrett as those, those two go at it. Kyle will be moving into 15th position if he takes that position. Now, a little bit ago, Dale Jarrett had tried to make a move on the inside of Alan Kowicki and and about six cars went by him on the outside. The outside seems to be the best route. Now we're looking out from underneath of Kyle Petty's car. To the right front suspension. Should be an interesting shot maybe during pit stops, but look at the tire make contact with the racetrack. Here they come off the fourth corner into the trioval, side by side this time as they cross the line. Now they will do well to let one of them let the other one go because they're holding each other up, and I think Dale Jarrett's going to do that now, let Kyle go on by because they were slowing themselves down in a pack behind them and beginning to catch up. And now there's that pack behind them. Alan Kowick in car number seven, Morgan Shepard in car number 15, and Michael Walker in car number 30. Michael coming up in the field pretty good because he had started back in the 34th position. Morgan Shepard trying to get by the Kowicki car. Takes a look on the inside. 
But as Ned said, it looks like the top groove right now is the best way around the racetrack. Although Bill Earnhardt just went on the bottom of the racetrack. Big news out of the Michael Walter Mahari Racing team this weekend as they announce that next year they will begin an association with Pennzoil for sponsorship on that car. Ken Schrader drops to the bottom of the racetrack with smoke pouring from the rear end of the race car. Yes, they, he'd lost something on the racetrack or some type of fluid, although he was very low on the racetrack. I don't know if it'd bring out a caution or not. We'll just have to see. I would guess because of the threat of rain, the NASCAR would perhaps uh, not throw a caution as quickly as they normally would have, but of course they will if there is any type of danger to the other drivers on the racetrack. Schrader making his way toward the pit area very, very slowly. There's the interval between first and second. You can see that Bill Elliott, who took the lead at the drop of the green flag, has stretched it out a bit. I guess uh, Ken Schrader didn't go by and kiss that rock, did he? Here's a pass for third place. Mark Martin to the inside of Rusty Wallace, but Rusty <laughs> battling back on the outside groove, and Mark a little bit sideways. Yep, he's trying to keep the car on the bottom of the race track to keep out of the side of Rusty Wallace. He could not do it. Meanwhile, Greg Sachs is on the inside of Sterling Brown trying to take that spot away. That's a race for a spot. They really are having it tough down on that inside. I'm sorry, that's got to be a race for six spots back there. It is for fifth spot. The, the yellow flag is out. Our first of the afternoon. Caution waves over Michigan. Don't see a reason for it. Perhaps NASCAR officials have been have determined that there is some oil in the portions of the racetrack, perhaps from by Ken Schrader. And so we are yellow for the first time, and that is the reason there is oil down in turn number one. The yellow comes out on lap number 21 of the Champions Heart Plug 400, where Bill Elliott leads. And because of oil down in turn number one, perhaps laid down by Ken Schrader when he had an engine let go. We will be seeing some pit stops coming up here in just a moment as the cars now come off of the fourth corner and head forward. You can see you know, the, the crew chief standing out there with their sign boards indicating where their particular pit is. And here comes Bill Elliott, who was the leader and the second place car of Dale Earnhardt. Let's go to Jerry Punch. We'll show you both the prop two cars fixed off to Elliott on the top of your screen. Our split screen, bottom is Dale Earnhardt. Through going to the right side of the Earnhardt. Through. He's spinning all the way down towards turn one while Elliott is already getting left side tires about halfway up pit road. Elliott's through now getting into the car a little quicker. Back in the left side up. Now they are around the left side of the Earnhardt car. Pulling the good ring several of those tires off. Remember, Earnhardt is all the way down towards turn one. Elliott is down, moving down pit road. Earnhardt is by virtue of his pit selection, he will beat Bill Elliott back. Pit positioning, very important for Dale Earnhardt. We talk about track position, but in that case, it was pit position that allowed Dale to get out. They, they made a major chassis adjustment on that three car. I was, uh, I was really surprised as well as he was running, they would make that kind of a change, but a major chassis adjustment on Earnhardt's car. But he was not running as good as Bill Elliott, so oh, I guess good. they figured, okay, we need to do something. Now Earnhardt pulls up beside a Sterling Marl and say, hey, I'm sorry, I touched you over there a little bit ago. Well, good year. We donating $1,000 in the name of our pole sitter, Alan Kowicki, to the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary as Alan Kowicki continues to struggle here in the early going. He was on the pole but dropped back several positions about to 17th position before that yellow flag came out let's go to uh, jerry with more on this chassis adjustment on the earnhardt car just before the caution came out nascar had come over here richard childress and the earnhardt pitch and they apparently had a report of some smoke coming from beneath the number three car some of the drivers behind him sterling marlin and others had radioed that they saw smoke coming from out from underneath earnhardt's good rich chevrolet well NASCAR watched it for a couple laps and didn't see anything, but Childers decided that maybe on the pit stop they'd take a little extra time to look underneath the car. And also, Earnhardt, while they were sitting here, complained that the car may be skittering a little bit, a little bit too loose, so they jacked some weight to the car, and hopefully that's what the smoke was, purely tire smoke from the rear tires. So Dale Earnhardt, who won the race here in June, perhaps with some smoke coming from the car, will watch it as the green flag comes out here in a couple of more laps. It will be at least one more before we go green for Michigan, so we'll take this break and be right back. 
more lap will be going back to green and restarting the Champions Park Flow 400. Dave Marcus hesitated to make a pit stop and was in the lead, but now he is in the pits, and up front is Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Buick car number 26. Here is Ernie Irvin's pit stop. Watch, ooh, the car comes down on that guy's left foot. Fourthly, that's a piece of fiberglass, and it's uh, not a piece of steel or something. Uh, so what was the problem on Ernie's car, uh, John? Well, Bob, it, what happened was the they thought it might have been a bad spark plug, but actually one of the plug wires was off of the spark plug, so they had to make two stops here on this caution. A very fortunate time. In fact, now Ernie is just now going back out. He, they had to just put the plug wire back on the spark plug, and that should solve the problem, and they came back in and took on four tires. So Ernie does not lose a lap, and here is the top five. Brett Bodine, Rick Wilson, Sterling Marlin, Dale Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott after 25 laps. And these standings really reflect more what happened in the pit area than on the racetrack. Oh, well, did Sterling Marlin only change two, or did he change four? I think he changed two tires. So did Rick Wilson and Brett Bodine, and that allowed them to get out a little bit quicker. They made good pit stops, but so did Dale, Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott, and they both changed four tires. The yellow flag remains out. Uh, we were going to go green, but now we've decided to go at least one more. Further update from Earnhardt's Pitt and Jerry. We talked about the smoke coming from Earnhardt's car when they deciphered what the problem was. Apparently, when Earnhardt went underneath Sterling Marlin to make the pass for second spot, they had some contact. The defender was rubbing Earnhardt's right rear tire. The caution flag a big break for the number three because the right rear tire was going flat. They just tested the tire here in the pits, and apparently it was going down. So a break for Earnhardt early on at Michigan. We are early, early laps here on the Gaffin Spark Plug 400. Lots of laps to come your way. Stay with us. We'll be back with some great racing. World today at Brooklyn, Michigan, Michigan International Speedway in the Champion Spark Plug 400, which is just about to get back to green after our first caution of the day because of oil down in turn number one. Brett Bodine leads him down. The green flag is back out on lap number 28. Wilson second, then Marlins. And Earnhardt and Elliott. Now look at Dale Earnhardt go through that oil dry and throwing up a rooster tail. big enough for a car to get in there, but anybody can get it there, Earnhardt can. Squeezed in between Bill Elliott and Sterling Marlin. I think oh. Sterling had to back off just a little bit to allow that to happen. He didn't want to get into a situation like they had earlier where both of them could have really been fouled up. And look at that car of Earnhardt's <laughs> Once again, Marlin and Dale Earnhardt are wheel to wheel and side by side, headed into turn one. Remember, they bumped here a few laps back. Rusty Wallace comes along to the outside. I think he's found out that's the place to be to get good momentum coming off the turn. Well, Sterling's hung, Sterling has hung on the inside. He's probably going to go to the back of this pack. Joe Elliott's trying to get inside the 75 car. Elliott had an ocean, but backed off, though. And now here comes Earnhardt to challenge Bill Elliott for third. See what Earnhardt might have the preferred position. Let's see if Bill can make a pass on Rick Wilson. No, he can't. Look, he's going back. This is as close a racing as we've seen in Michigan in several years. It sure is. And, folks, these are not restrictor plates. These are unrestricted engines. 650 horsepower. Bill Venturini heads for pit road with some smoke coming from the car. We believe it to be tire smoke. Look at this. Earnhardt, now Elliott and Rusty Wallace are side by side in the back stretch, and here comes Bill. One thing Bill does have is some horsepower coming off those turns. But he just can't get in the corner hard enough on that bottom groove. Yeah, now you see him, he'll pull back up a 
but he's been doing it to, to come off the turn. Couldn't quite do it that time. And meanwhile, oh, Mark Martin decided he would try it on the inside. Yeah, that's why Elliott couldn't make the move himself. But if it would work for Mark, it wouldn't work for Elliott. Probably not for Mark either. Meanwhile, Brett Bodine and Rick Wilson continue to head the field up front. Now Earnhardt looks to the inside of Rick Wilson in that yellow number 75 car. There's the first pack. And here comes the second pack. Being led by Greg Sachs, then Bobby Hillen, then Hutt Strickland, and Richard Petty. Here comes Earnhardt moving to the inside of Rick Wilson, taking over second position. Oh, and they touch. Oh, man. Whew. Here comes Rusty Wallace looking for third. Rusty might be in trouble down there. If Rick Wilson, oh, they're trying. They're, oh, oh, I think they touch. I did. I do too. Rick said, okay, if you want it that bad, go ahead. Yeah, so Rick's had a lot of tough luck this year. He, he feels good running up near that front once again. But uh, he doesn't want to take any unnecessary chances in the start of the race, which is smart. Not this early in the race, at least. Here's Sterling Marlin and Jeff Bodine catching the back. Six cars running nose to tail and side by side. Here comes Bill Elliott underneath the 75 car. Now he has a Mark Martin to help him. Maybe those two cars together can draft by the 75 car. Elliott passes. I don't know if Marks will be able to make it. Not through the first corner. Wilson hangs on. Look at the battle for second. Rusty Wallace is showing some muscle. Now watching Wilson go a little high in those turns might be an indication, Benny, that that he only changed right side tires. That might be killing him a little bit in the turns. Elliot, Elliot, go, whether uh, Earnhardt goes to the lead using the outside groove on Brett Bodine. And here comes Rusty Wallace. Now they got Brett sort of pinned down to the inside. Earnhardt's going to pull down and try to help him. We thought about it for a moment. But uh, Rusty is already by. And here comes Elliot. It's Earnhardt, Wallace, Elliott, then Bodine, and Wilson. Meanwhile, there's a gaggle back there. Ooh, Jack Pennington, heavy smoke. Now, this on now. That's coming off turn two. Candidate for rookie of the year. Yellow flag is out, fellas. Second yellow of the afternoon comes out as smoke pours from Jack Pennington's car. Let's see if we have any position changes as they come down and race to the yellow flag. Mark Martin. Martin may get the spot over Rick Wilson. Yes, he does. So Mark Martin will be fifth on the restart unless they pit. Second yellow of the afternoon because of smoke coming from the Jack Pennington car here at Michigan International Speedway. Won't they pit? And the answer is no, they won't. This is kind of like monkey see, monkey do. If Dale Earnhardt had went in the pits, I think every car there would have followed him. And you but can see how many uh, board, people we got standing out on pit road as if to say, yeah, we're coming in. We're listening in on uh, the Kyle Petty conversation with crew chief Gary Nelson. Let's see if they talk about any pit strategy that may be employed here. Several cars have come in for a pit stop, but not the front runners. Alan Kowicki is in, so is Richard Petty. Chad Little. I guess they don't want to talk to each other. Yes, they don't. Certainly, the, the cars that were back near the end of the pack have nothing to lose by coming into the pits now. Here comes Richard Petty. They're working on the Jack Pennington car. They've got the hood down on it. They're also working on the right rear of the pole sitter, Alan Kowicki's car. They were laying on the ground just a moment there. They're back on the ground looking under the right rear. They've got a jack over there. Evidently, something has came, but come loose. Would uh, they possibly be changing the track bar? Any possible lowering it or raising it? It looks like they've got some wrenches there. That's probably what they're doing is lowering or raising or lowering the sway bar. John Kernan is on his way to find out, and we'll have a report from him in just a moment. Meanwhile, Alan Kowicki rejoins the race. The field is on the back stretch. They need to make a change on that car because uh, it certainly wasn't running as good as it did yesterday when he won the pole, so I expect they were making some pretty major changes, and we'll find out in a little bit. 
And let's go to Jerry, who's with Jack Pennington. Well, the driver of the very close racing Oldsmobile steps out. Jack, what happened to you? Uh, sometimes that all fan, all fan busted and all run out of motors. Can't be fixed. You guys are close to a deal for next year, I understand. You've run awfully well, led at Daytona, and uh, any statements you're going to make now? Well, we're just working on some. That's all I can say. <laughs> Jack Pennington currently second in the Rookie of the Year. Standings behind Rob Moroso. Had a good run going, but it will all go up in smoke here in Michigan. Boy, this is a great time of year, and I love this time of year when everybody's speculating as the field is given the signal for one more lap. Everybody's speculating on who's going to go where next year and what sponsorships are going where and who's dropping out. Here are the top 15. It's Earnhardt and Wallace, followed by Elliott, Bodine, and Martin after 37 laps. Six through 10, Rick Wilson and Sterling Marlin, Jeff Bodine, Davey Allison, and Kyle Petty. And then the 11 through 15, Michael, Ricky, Derek, Greg, and Harry. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Oh, I'm sorry, John Kernan. Bob Allen has come back in. They've made a chassis adjustment on the right rear at that time. Benny, you're absolutely correct. They were raising the pan arm bar. That's why they had the right rear of the car jacked up on that last pit stop. Well, John, thank you very much for giving me the credit, but unfortunately <laughs> it was Matt that said that. <laughs> That's okay. I was thrown to the wrong person. So uh, <laughs> let's get back in under green flag conditions here in a half a lap. Earnhardt sort of faked every time he came around. He, he acted as if he was going to come into the pits, but Rusty Wallace couldn't pull that. He stays out there. We saw Ricky run in 12 spots. He started 39. Folks, that's how competitive Winston Cup race is. He, qual he won the race last week in Watkins Glen, qualified 39th here for the Champions Park Club 400. Yeah, he got a little bit out of shape during his qualifying run that was not reflective of how the car was running, and so it makes a uh, good sense that he has moved up quickly. Look at the huge crowd on hand here at Michigan, despite some cloudy and at times rainy weather. They're here for the Champions Park Club 400, which resumes on lap number 39. Down in turns one and two, we see it coming up from underneath the car. Oh, look at the four car trying to get by Moroso. Jimmy Spencer in the 57 on the outside. They were three abreast for just a moment. And Ernie Irvin was down in that oil drive where there could be a little bit of oil remaining, but a nice job of hanging on to the car. Irvin now may be moving up as he goes to the high side of Moroso and a lot of action ahead of him. Now we're watching from Dick Trickle's perspective at the wide racing up there. Looks like Spencer might have touched the wall coming off the fourth corner there. I thought some dust fly. He sure picked up a lot of dust. This is down through the trioval now, heading into turn number 118 degrees of banking. This triple close is driving on the back of the four car. Here's a look at it. We'll see if Jimmy Spencer on the outside does tap the wall. Oh, he sure does. Yeah, he really did. Nice call, Benny. He was on the outside of Morgan Shepard. In fact, they might have touched a little bit when he came down off the wall, but they're both still going. This is the Phillips 66 in car, carried by Dick Riddle. Unfortunately, our helicopter has to fly a little bit low because of the low ceiling, and therefore the in-car camera pictures aren't quite as good as they might be able to behind the 66 car. Gary Labonte and Butch Miller are side by side. Looks like Miller takes it far away, coming off the second corner. And here's Kyle Petty and Michael Waldrop battling for the position. <laughs> That's a couple of nice ones there. Yeah, a couple of buddies. But they don't mind racing hard when they get on the racetrack. Waltrip and Kyle Petty and Gary Cope and Hudson Clark. Gary Nelson saying 43.85 on the leader. He's telling him what the leader runs, and now he will tell Kyle what he's running so Kyle can make the relationship and figure out if he needs to change grooves, move up or down on the racetrack, to try to find a better place to run. Right now he's moving to the low side to pass Michael Walter, but he brings Gary Cope with him. Off the turn. Here's a pass for fourth position. Mark Martin to the inside and Brett Bodine outside. Mark 
Martin has four. Sterling Marlin now looking for the opportunity to pass Brett Bodine. Here is the first two cars, Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. Remember last week going in turn one of the <laughs> I don't think Rusty's going to take any chances passing Dale. Boy, how many times last year did we see these guys run together and fight for that Winston Cup championship that Rusty Wallace finally walked away with. Bill Elliott pulls right up on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace. Back there, Bobby Hillen on the inside, Hutch Strickland, Michael Walker, Greg Sachs. Now this gets two abreast. Hillen decided that wasn't going to be smart to go in there three wide, knowing the inside is not the groove to be right now. He'll be back off. Meanwhile, Harry Gens behind that group trying to figure out which line to get in, which line's going to go forward. And that's always a problem, trying to figure out which line's going forward. Bill Elliott. Now on the rear spoiler of Rusty Wallace for second spot as Dale Earnhardt continues to hang on to the lead. 44 laps completed. There is no right guard halfway challenge money paid for this race, but you got to be thinking that many of the drivers are perhaps going for the 101st lap because the weather continues to be very threatening here in South Central Michigan. There's Dale Earnhardt, who leads Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott, and others here at the Champion Spark Plug 400, back in a moment. Jared, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Michigan International for the Champion Spark Plug 400. Mark Martin moves to the low side of Bill Elliott. Here in the tri-oval before the huge crowd looking for third position, Martin in car number six, Ford's battling it out here for the position. And Mark Martin gets it. Well, almost, but Bill Elliott's going to get off, come off the corner with a little more momentum and might take the spot back. And both of them wiggle just a bit. They are absolutely side by side. Now, Elliott, a little bit ahead going to turn three. Mark is really getting a good run coming off of turn four. He dives down on the inside, keeps it low there, and then we'll see him pull up beside of him again coming off of turn four. He's getting good traction there, but he has not been able to build up quite enough momentum to carry him on past him totally. This time he's a little farther past him the time before, but he might have to back off a little bit going into turn one. We'll see. Yep, sure does. That's what we talked about. Bill Elliott is running in the high groove. Mark Martin running the low groove. If Mark Martin, as he comes off the corner, could let the car drift out against the guardrail, would be able to run much faster than when he has to find the car down to try to get underneath Bill Elliott. 17 car of Greg Sachs leading a parade down the back stretch that also includes Michael Waltrip and Hutt Strickland and Bobby Hillen. about 14, 15, 16, and 17. And there is the interval up to the front of the pack where the Chevrolet of Dale Earnhardt leads the Pontiac of Rusty Wallace and then the Fords of Elliott and Martin battling for third. Rusty Wallace comes into this race fourth in the point standings, 260 behind, still hoping to win the championship. Remember last week, the incident with Dale Earnhardt? We asked Rusty, have you talked to Dale about last week's incident? No, I haven't talked to him. I just watched Barry's interview, and he was kind of misinformed about what happened. Uh, he said, Rusty got in the corner too deep, and we apologized. I don't apologize. I didn't get in the corner too deep. I raced down to, down that corner side by side, and went one car going to fit. Earnhardt didn't make it, and I went on. So uh, Earnhardt and I are good friends. But I'm not going to apologize about racing. Just one of those racing accidents. Speaking of being misinformed, well, not misinformed, but not informed as much as we should have been. Who won that cook-off last week, Benny? Well, the tabulations are finally in. And Doyle Ford and Bruce Roney, two fellows on the NASCAR trucks, two NASCAR officials. By the way, Doyle Ford is a flag, but we can see the guys waving the flag. He won but they won the cooking contest. So the NASCAR truck with the entry racetrack chili won the cooking. We 
wish I could have had some. Boy, this battle for third goes on, and it's just back and forth every lap. Martin is on the inside in number six, and Elliott on the outside in car number nine. Here is Ricky Rudd and Jeff Bodine, and Rudd has just had a great first quarter of the race. He started 39th, and he's up racing for what spot is that? Eighth or ninth? For ninth spot. Let's wow. go to Jerry Punch with a comment. Well, the car that Ricky Rudd is driving is familiar to fans this year because it's the same car that Greg Sachs used to finish second at the Bush Clash in Daytona, also second at Talladega in May to Dale Earnhardt, and this car set on the pole in July. Now, it had slim fast colors on it. They had to rebuild the car to that massive melee at Daytona. Not here at the track right now, being tested in the hospital. He was ill this morning, so maybe Al and his crew having to suffer with that leader here at Michigan. Well, our best uh, to suitcase Jake, as Rudd is trying to hold on to a top 10 position. But right now, Davy Allison has inched ahead at the line and has the 10th spot. Here's the serial on Ricky Rudd from 27th at the end of lap number 10 to 16th at the end of 30 laps. And now, as you see, he is battling for that 10th position with Davey Allison at the end of 53 circuits. Now, this is some doggone close racing. These cars are really close. Jerry Colton, the fuel editor, simply drives it. Oh, where did Davey go? <laughs> he's he's <laughs> down on the inside of it. Three abreast they come. the perfect example of uh, three groups right where you guys were at the beginning of the program. They're three wide right now. Could be four by the end of the day. But they just sort of walked out there. Down on the inside. He just couldn't get the traction he needed. So he falls back behind that group. Battle for third continues. Mark Martin still trying to take over that third position. Bill Elliott. Boy, has he worked hard to get that position. If he ever gets it, he's going to earn it. And the car is flying. I think that the six car, given a clean racetrack, would probably be the fastest car out there now. But he just can't get by. It remains Dale Earnhardt up front with Rusty Wallace second. And then Martin and Elliott. Bob, even though Benny and I talked about the wide track, and we've seen that they can run three abreast here, there's still one place on the racetrack that you can go faster than anywhere else. And, uh, of course, Bill Elliott is using the groove that's, that's the fastest for him right now, and apparently that's the groove that would be fastest for Mark Martin. And that's what makes it so great is who knows where that fastest way is. you got to keep going up and down trying to find it. Martin now settles back into fourth position. Some great racing going on here at Michigan International. The average speed of the race is 138.6. We'll be right back. Eastern time, and if you're just joining us, welcome to Michigan International Speedway. We're live for the champion spark plug 400 Winston Cup race, and there are the top four. It's Earnhardt, Wallace, Bill Elliott, and Mark Martin. Running in fifth position is the 26 car of Brett Bodine. The number 12 car, while we watch this action up front of Hunt Strickland, who was running 16, just came in for a four-tire change pit stop and dropped a lap. Bill Elliott and Mark Martin has run the 27 down. Bill Elliott now moved down on the racetrack to where Mark Martin is. See, now he's searching, trying to find that quick way around, and it's working for him. It certainly has been. He has been able to move up on Rusty Wallace. <laughs> now will he be able to pass him? Rusty sort of guarding all of those crews. He's really protecting his position. Every, every groove out there. <laughs> Bill looked inside, so Rusty went down there. So Bill said, okay, I'll go outside. <laughs> Many people thought this race would be a Bill Elliott runaway, and before we had the first caution, Bill did show his supremacy. However, now he finds himself back in third position, and his hands full with Mark Martin. It's right now, Dale Earnhardt has things to do. You mentioned that Brent Bodine is running fifth. He's uh, in a position back there, no car close to him. Uh, in front of him, they're pretty far in front of him, and the sixth place car is pretty far behind him. Today we 
had four lead changes already for different leaders. This is the scene of the fourth most competitive race in Winston Cup history back in 1981 when the lead changed hands 65 times. One laps are completed right now out of 200 on this two-mile track. we got to be seeing pit stops pretty soon, don't we? Yeah, I would say within the next five, six, seven laps, we should be seeing some uh, pit stops. It's oh, a good. tight pack of cars. That's Jeff Bodine and Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd and Greg Sachs. And Sachs just drives in there trying to take the spot away. Meanwhile, they are bumper to... And here comes, here comes Coke. Wow. Those guys know to turn the steering wheel and get in the Well, you did. Oh. Uh, I never raced here in Michigan, so I didn't learn those tricks. Man. This track opened in 1968 with an IndyCar race on October 13th. The first Winston Cup race was June 15th of 1969. It was won by Cale Yarborough. The race for third continues. Look at this. They're back side by side. Martin with the advantage coming out of the corner. And now Bill Elliott will get that momentum coming off right. the corner. They're literally side by side. As I look across, they are side by side. And now Bill Elliott going in the corner gets the spot. Here comes Martin again. He said, maybe I'll do it this time. Boy, that car just took off there. Boy, does he get through the bottom. Ooh, he's yeah. a little quickly coming through four. You know, yesterday in the late practice, I went down in the garage area. Glenn Wood, who owns the Sitco Ford at Dale Jarrett, owned it. He said, boy, said, I've been watching that Mark Martin come off the third floor. He said, where he really gets it is just right up off of that corner, and we're seeing it happen here today. He gets good traction there. He has good horsepower coming up off of there. And, you know, a while ago, these two Fords worked together. They caught Rusty Wallace, and Wallace was not on her tail. Mark Martin decided he wanted to pass, and now they've dropped back for these spots. Here's Greg Sachs moving inside of Jeff Bodine. Greg Sachs again is driving this Tide machine in substitution for Daryl Walter, who is still out with the uh, broken leg. And here's Ricky Rudd trying to make a pass on Jeff Bodine. He almost goes up into it and picks up the draft off Greg Sachs down the straightaway, but will it be enough? Carry it by him. I don't think so. It's to go into the turn. That was a situation where Sachs knew that Ricky Rudd was his teammate. All both cars owned by Rick Henry. He tried to give a little draft to Ricky Rudd, but Rudd, oh, and now Rudd does take the spot away now. Benny, I believe, in, in, particularly in turns one and two, that the low groove is beginning to come in a little bit. Our chief spotter, who is positioned at the uh, end of the grandstand down toward turn number one, says raindrops are beginning to be felled out there. And we are still, uh oh, 65 laps. How many laps are we from the halfway point, Benny? 35. Thank you. I knew you'd never figure that out. Some fan did send you, a send you a calculator, though, so at least solar-powered calculator. Thank you. Pit stops will be coming up in uh, three or four laps, and before they do, we'll take a break and be back with more live action at Michigan International Speedway. Ricky Wood in car number five. Dale Earnhardt comes in. Jerry Punch reports from the CM French pit. Green flag pit stop for Denver Chevrolet. Earnhardt picking up where he left off last June, leading here at Michigan. They will come in and change two right side tires. Chevrolet coming to start on something. Gordon will go and take the left side tires, take a look at them. Meanwhile, David Smith, Jordan Chevrolet, will let the group change right side tires. One can't be lowered in. Chevrolet picking up where he left off last June, leading here at Michigan. They will come in and change two right side tires. They will come in and change two right side tires. One can't be lowered in. Second can't be lowered in. Going in. 12.1 seconds. He is out of the way. Michael Waltrip is also in for a pit stop in the Country Time Pontiac. Brett Bodine is on his way back out onto the racetrack after having made a stop. So it's Davey Allison. And that car changed left side, which is strange. Yeah. Here comes Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott both down pit road. John Kernan calls this pit stop. Rusty Wallace brings the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac in. The crew goes to work on the right side. They were anticipating to make a four tire change to adjust the stagger because the car has been just a little bit too tight. But the, the other teams have dictated what they must do. They've gone right sides only. Second can of Unicom gasoline going in. The Kiddios made the cars full. And
in his spot. 13.4 seconds. And Mark Martin is awaiting his arrival on pit road. And Bill Elliott has been in for service as well. Yeah, Elliott's chasing Rusty Wallace out of the pits as they head for the turn one area of the racetrack. Still awaiting the Mark Martin stop. And we see Bill Elliott going by underneath the yellow line. The three car of Dale Earnhardt has just passed Rusty Wallace coming off turn two to reassume the lead amongst those cars. Here's Mark Martin in the pits, car number six. And Kyle Petty. Let's go to John Kernan again. Mark Martin has got the Folgers forward in. It's Rugo's work on the right side. It looks like a good pit stop in the making. Second can in, waiting for the fuel to overflow to show that the car is full. Finally, he does get away. Kyle Petty is down pit road. He's in. We're going to work on the right side. They swing around, and the jack is down, and Kyle is away a two-tire change. Petty picking speed back up as we... Jason Binoculars in-car camera dial in for you. He stays below that yellow line. The 17 car of Greg Sachs is the leader at the moment, but he needs a pit stop soon. Seems like it doesn't matter who's driving it. Darrell Walter or Greg Sachs, they get tremendous fuel mileage. There again, another fellow who usually gets great mileage. It's Gold Bandit Oldsmobile coming down pit road. Looks like a right side change. John Kernan calls this stop. They go to work on the right side, also making a chassis adjustment on the left rear. They make one round of wedge they put into the car. They're also beating up the spoiler, get a little more downforce on the rear end with the two tire change and can his way in 13.3 seconds. Nice stop by that carry man crew. Dick Trickle now beginning to go up through the gears as he pulls back out onto the racetrack after completing pit stop number two for the day. The 17 car, Greg Sachs, remains our leader. Could be coming in for a pit stop this time around. The 75 car, Rick Wilson, was our second place machine. He comes in for the stop and now rolls again. And look at the damage on the right side of that car. He's tucked some wheels out there. He's made some contact with someone, that's for sure. But Rick has been having a good run here today. He was running in sixth place before. He made that pit stop. Here comes the car number 17 of Greg Sachs. Jerry Punch, he's headed your way. Greg, Greg Sachs coming for Darrell Walter, a two-time winner here at this road at the Speedway. Jeff Hammond of the crew waiting to go to work on the car. Hammond, Candy, Jones, and Greg Warner around the right side of the car. Hammond and Jack Benet, they will change right side tire. Clean the windshield. Putting one can of fuel in. Second can going in and check the left side tires. Now Hammond watching, waiting, waiting, waiting for the fuel. It's still waiting for the fuel. We're waiting for the 11 and 10 cars to come in for their pit stops. Looks like Gary Cope will be, yeah, look at him signal to the drivers behind him. In fact, both of them are coming in. Both Jeff Bodine and number 11 and Perry Cope and number 10 come in for their pit stops. John is with Gary Cope. The buddy parent led crew goes to work around the right side. They will check the left side. Bodine on the top of your screen. Cope on the bottom of your screen. A right side change for Derek Cope. Right side also for Jeff Bodine. They've got the tires on waiting for the gas. So cool that Derek Cope is out of the way. And so is Jeff Bodine as he drops off the jack and is headed down pit road. So it took the crew just about an equal amount of time to get tires on their cars and fuel in them. And now the 43 car of Richard Petty. Is he our leader? Yes, he is. He Richard, has not Petty. Stopped. And Richard has not stopped. Yes, he was running about 20. If you remember, he pitted on the, he was one of those cars that pitted on the last yep. caution play. Yep. yep. So, so he can run another probably uh, 20 or so laps. How about that? Richard always runs good here, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Uh, he has won four times at Michigan in 74, 75, 79, and 1981. And the king from Randleman, North Carolina, Richard Petty, at the moment leads this champion Spark Plug 400, race number 19 on the Winston Cup schedule. Richard Petty, on the right of your screen, is the leader of the champion Spark Plug 400. However, he needs a pit stop, and here he is, coming in for the stop. Richard Petty. Led three, four laps, but now relinquishes it to come in for his second scheduled pit stop of the afternoon. 
he had about 11 and a half second lead over Dale Earnhardt, who now takes over the lead once Petty comes into the pit. So he'll have, he should be able to get back out and stay in the lead lap with no problem. Still working on the car on the right side. Putting fresh tires on. Gas going in. And the battle for the lead is between Rusty Wallace in 27 and Dale Earnhardt in number three as Richard Petty pulls out onto the racetrack once again. These cars are literally side by side going in turn three. Let's see if Dale drives it on in there or is Rusty going to drive it in? Rusty is the guy that drives it in the hardest. Rusty sliding high on the racetrack as Earnhardt has the lower group. Ooh, they're close coming off corner number four. Well, Earnhardt would have beat him back to the line that time. Here's the Big A Auto Parts pit stop performance on Rusty Wallace. It took him 19.6 seconds to slow down and speed up. It took the crew 13.4 for a total of 33 seconds on that most uh, recent pit stop. But look at this, 31.3 total for Dale Earnhardt, 17.6. 13.7 for the crew. So once again, as we have seen all year, it takes Dale Earnhardt less time to get into and out of the pit area. Now look, we see Rusty Wallace trying to get by Earnhardt, but look right behind him is the six car Mark Martin as Rusty pulls up on Earnhardt. But Martin has finally got by Bill Elliott. He is the third place car, and Rusty Wallace leads that lap. He led it by about a half a car length, but now Earnhardt reasserts himself in turn number one and grabs the advantage. Bernard comes up the hill, blocks the spot. Look who's fourth. Catching up to Mark Martin. It's Bill Elliott. That's right. As these fellas have been trying to lead back and forth, it's allowed Bill Elliott and Mark Martin to catch up. 80 laps completed, 21 to the halfway point, or the point at which this race would be official. Once oh, again. Yeah, and for Rusty, we're trying to find himself a group very, very high. Again, we remind you that you can call the Sports 900 number, 1-900-SPORTS-1. Now, remember, it costs $1.95 for the first minute and a dollar for each additional minute. And kids, please get the permission of your parents before you dial. But you can hear some comments from your favorite driver and also get a race report on this event and all the news from the Winston Cup Racing Series. Sports 1 system, 1-900-SPORTS-1 is the number to dial. Rusty Wallace once again up high in turn number four. I don't think Earnhardt wants to run that high, but unfortunately he has to go up there to block Rusty Wallace, who loves to go up there. Yeah, he's been running that high groove out of four all afternoon, right up against the wall. And Mark Martin consistently has been running on the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, whether or not he can run on the bottom and pass these two cars is... Uh, Another story. Another story. You know, that high group worked pretty good for Earnhardt that time. He went up there. He might have learned something. And as you said, at the top of the show, he will search around and, and try to find those spots. Now, this time, he goes low in turn four, coming off the turn four. He lets the car drift up right in front of Rusty Wallace, so Rusty not able to make the move. This is the best battle, the one that we're covering for you for the lead, Earnhardt, Wallace, and Mark Martin. Now, there is another pretty good battle going on right here between the car number 94 of Sterling Marlin and Derek Cope in car number 10. As Derek tries to get down on the inside, they come off the close. They're battling for the ninth position. Cope. Had the spot coming off the corner, back back to the lead. Dale Earnhardt, the black three, the black 27 is second. That's Rusty Wallace, the maroon six, Mark Martin, and the red nine is Bill Elliott. And they're the 10, Derek Cope, the 94, Sterling Marlin. I'm doing play-by-play. Play. You take it. <laughs> I'm just enjoying sitting here watching it. Admittedly, there have been races at Michigan International that have been somewhat less than competitive and exciting. This is not one of them. We have seen great racing so far in the first 85 laps. And a lot more to come. Oh, look.
to get rusty, going high again in the fourth turn. Now, Dale King come up, can he, man? Yeah, he'll come up. Yo, yeah, come on, on now, guys. Right on and see, Rusty is already up there, drifting out. He can't cut left and come down under him when Earnhardt drives up there. He either has to back off of the gas or hit him. Earnhardt continues to lead, but does the width of this racetrack allow it to be a little bit more forgiving here in Michigan? Well, you do, but still you got to be pretty smooth here. It's a, a big D-shaped oval, and it's, it's a fast it's speed, it's super speedway. So you can uh, run a car a little loose here, and a little or a little pushy, and, and manhandle it and get around with it. But, you know, it's, it's pretty forgiving racetrack, though. It's pretty easy. Folks, it's getting a little bit darker here. I, this may be for the win. There's 15, 14 oh. laps now. What happened? Rusty was a little bit <laughs> I looked up the scoreboard. You get me excited. Don't Bob. take your eyes off the monitor. <laughs> but it's four, 13 laps to go to halfway right now, and this could be the race for the win. Yep. There was an 80% chance of rain here in Michigan yesterday. It didn't rain a drop. As a matter of fact, the sun shone most of the afternoon. We got up this morning. They were saying a 70% chance of rain. However, we only got one shower. Now look at this. Dale Earnhardt's last four finishes, a win, a fourth place, another win, and a seventh place. He is out to get the Winston Cup again. Rusty Wallace, meanwhile, has been struggling. A 14th, a third, a 32nd, and a 34th. Last week's, of course, 34th place finish because of his blown engine in the early going. I tell you, folks, it doesn't get any better than this. Four cars, the first four, nose to tail. A Chevrolet, a Pontiac, and a couple of Fords. And after green flag just stops too, Benny, that's exceptionally good. You see that a lot of times after the caution has come out, but they run a long time now under green. 88 laps completed out of 200 that make up the champion spark plug 400. We'll take another break and be right back with more live action. To run nose to tail on the racetrack, it's Earnhardt, then Wallace, then Martin, and then Elliott. Baseball tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time here on ESPN. Some intra-division action tonight as the New York Mets take on the San Francisco Giants. The East Coast fans will, of course, be interested in what the Mets do, and the San Francisco Giants fans on the West Coast will be interested in what their team does. That's at 8 o'clock tonight, live on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. I'll tell you what, that Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt got to collide sooner or later coming off turn four. That's what I've been thinking every lap for the last 12 or 15 laps. Let's go to Jerry Punch with a comment on Dale Earnhardt. Well, here in the Earnhardt pit, they are looking skyward, watching the very ominous dark clouds begin to move it over the International Speedway. But they have other concerns. Apparently, by changing only two tires in that green flag foot stop, the car has got very, very tight. They are at a difficult time getting the car off the turn three and four. The Earnhardt is controlled. Whatever you do, hang on to that lead at least for a halfway point. So if it rains, we'll have a win. How about it up the North Sea Wall with John Curtis? It's exactly the same type of strategy. I just talked to Barry Dotson, Rusty's crew chief. I said, you're racing for that halfway point, right? He said, well, there's no halfway money available, but we're racing for the big money because they are looking skyward and watching these clouds roll in. Now, the car was a little bit tight earlier. Apparently, it is not as tight as it was, and they say Rusty is in pretty good shape. He is in very good shape, challenging Earnhardt off the second corner once again, down the back stretch. Rusty will go outside as Earnhardt continues to struggle to the inside. Here comes Mark Martin. Well, look how strong that three car of Earnhardt is at the end of the straightaway. Now, Rusty might have him this time. Earnhardt drives way down to the bottom of the racetrack, but going into turn one, you know, they come across the start finish line, they've been side by side. It looks like they're going to be that way again as they come down, but then Earnhardt, as they go into turn one, just shoots out in front. Let's see if he does it this time. They work side by side at the start finish line, and well, this time he didn't jump out quite as much as he has been doing going into that turn. If that were the finish of the race, it would have been a photo finish because they literally were dead even when they crossed the line. I think Wallace has the lead. Yes, Dale Earnhardt finally pulls in behind the 27 car. He's got to hold it to the line to be the official leader of the lap. This time by, it'll be lap number 95. It takes 101 laps to make an official race. They're averaging 147.70 miles an hour. And here they come off the board. 
and Rusty Wallace will have the lead as they cross the line in complete lap 95. You know, Ned, Bill Elliott was so strong all week and in practice and in June. Is he laying back? I mean, it's, it may rain, don't you think? He better go? Well, yeah, I don't think he's laying back. I, mean, I think he, he's running about as good as he can, can possibly go. These guys, I think, are running stronger than they were here in June. I, I really felt like that Bill Elliott would dominate the race, as he did in June, lead 100 laps and one half. But once they had that green flag, so that first pit stop, and he went back to third, he's never been able to get back to the lead. That's right. And look at Rusty right up on top of the racetrack, and Earnhardt in the middle of the racetrack, and it's working for Rusty. He's running probably an eighth of a mile further than Bill Earnhardt, but he's able to do it faster. Showing you the top 30 here after 95 laps, and we have completed... back to 16th spot. Alan Kowicki, our pole sitter, is way back in 21st position as Earnhardt now has his hands full with the third place car of Mark Martin. Ernie Irvin had a bad start, has fallen all the way back to 25th. There's Buddy Baker in Junior Dunleavy's car, being lapped by the 27th car. Now the cars that have dropped out of competition include Ken Schrader and Pennington and Ed Cooper. Well, there's still 27 cars in the lead lap. Buddy Baker, 26 cars. Buddy Baker's running 27. Lutz Strickland would be the next to go a lap down. He's shown in 26 spot. Next time around, the complete 98 laps. That is second and third. Rusty Wallace has the lead over Earnhardt and Mark Martin. And Bill Elliott trying to get around Buddy Baker. The green number 26 would be next in the serial scoring. That's Brett Bodine with another good run. And he still isn't racing with anyone, Ned. No, nope, out there by himself. Just, uh, just riding around having a good time. Brett Bodine running in fifth spot. One of the 10 winners this year. By drag racing standout Kenny Bernstein. He was in action up in Brainerd, Minnesota this weekend, the NHRA. Well, since Rusty Wallace took the lead, he has picked up about two tenths of a second over what they were running. Uh, so evidently Earnhardt was holding him up a little bit. Looking now at the next car coming up. Back of Brett Bodine would be Greg Sachs in the number 17 car. Here's the interval between fifth and sixth position. The 71 car driven by Dave Marcus is uh, in the left down. Dave won the whole race here today for the first time since his injury at Daytona. Sort of an unusual situation yesterday in qualifying. Dave Marcus was the fastest second day qualifier, but it wasn't good enough to get into the race. He had to take a provisional to get into the 41 car starting field. We continue to fall back and watch the action. Here comes Gary Cope in front of He's in eighth position. Speculation in the garage here that Curator is going to be back next year and for two more years in this car. We're at the halfway point. Lost flags are being shown by Doyle Ford. What is that, a piece of tape that's flapping there on the windshield? Yeah, it's a, Evidently, they take the, uh, something to do with the cow then, where the air goes in and the carburetor. And look, when he goes in the corner, it just stops going back and forth. He gets out of the draft with that other car. Now, watch him when he picks it up. He'll start to move him. Yeah, look at that. When he gets behind that car, it starts, to, the turbulence starts to move him. Well, there's a lesson in aerodynamics. Man. Richard Petty comes in for another pit stop while we watch the action from Derek Cope's car. I think this is an unscheduled pit stop for Richard Petty. He was the last of the leaders to come into the pit, so it's certainly an unscheduled stop for the key. Yeah. Taking on four tires. He must have had a vibration, perhaps, maybe a tire equalized. It's only been about 30 laps since he was in, so this is not a scheduled pit stop for the king. have reached the 101 lap mark. It is an official race. Should we get rain? The leader is Rusty Wallace. And here are the top 10 at the champion Spark Plug 400. Stay with us. 
One of the biggest problems a driver faces on a long, hot afternoon in a race car is temperature. Now, most of the temperature inside the cockpit of the car comes from the heat off the motor. The drivers we've seen get injured significantly during an afternoon, second and third degree burns to their lower legs and feet. Well, this new product here it may revolutionize the heat insulating properties in a race car. It's called Delta K. Many believe it'll replace asbestos or even Nomex as a heat insulator. Now, Gary, where did this product come from? Well, it's the product of the aerospace industry, much like the tiles you would see on the front of the space shuttle. It's just now becoming available to the racers. And what it'll do, it will provide a barrier from the heat to the driver. Show me how it works. Now, I'm told the exhaust gases coming out of a race car are around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This torch Gary has is over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And he tells me that if you put this torch against the Delta K and I put my hand behind it, that my hand won't get warm. Is that right? Trust me, Gary. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. I don't feel a thing back here. I'm back behind it there. Now, without the Delta K on there, let's show you what a driver's foot will feel throughout a hot afternoon on that floorboard. Better move your hand there. Folks, that's hot. Boy, Jerry was really trusting there, wasn't he? The action on the racetrack has been hot all afternoon. However, we have had a crash, and the yellow flag is out. The crash involves number 77, Ken Reagan, and... Buddy Baker, here's how it happened. Looked like that Ken Reagan, something happened when we see the black marks going in the corner and he backs in the wall hard. Baker looked like he just spun trying to avoid uh, Reagan and maybe didn't have any damages. I don't know if Buddy, Buddy was able to get going again. Well, or not. no, he was out of the race car. We saw him, the driver we saw when we came on with it was Buddy Baker standing there. And, uh, or at least that's what I thought. Here's the pit crew about to get busy. Everybody coming in, most everybody at least, as Wallace and Martin and Earnhardt and Sachs and Bodine and Bodine and many others come in for service. Here's the 90 car of Buddy Baker as it passes by in front of us. Here's yeah, you were the right. action. He did, uh, he did come on around. I beg your pardon. So Buddy did come around. I thought he was outside his helmet off. But, uh... Rusty Wallace and uh, Earnhardt is in the pits. Jerry Punch is right there. They have changed right side tires, and they must be very quick here because there's a lot of concern about the weather here. They want to get him back out as quick as possible. Rusty Wallace is already headed down that road. Here comes Mark Martin, and there goes Mark Martin. I won't get past Mark Martin. The drag race between me and Jeff Bodine and Bill Elliott as they head back to turn one. Rusty Wallace won the race out of the pits. Martin second and Earnhardt third. And then Elliott. The way they will line up for the restart. Right now, the ambulance still down in turn number one. But we saw Ned, saw Ken Reagan standing there by the car. That was Reagan standing okay. there with his helmet on. Yeah, he so, uh, uh, apparently isn't seriously injured, but they probably will take him to the infield hospital and check him out for any possible injuries. Ken Reagan crashing here at the 106th lap mark of the Champions Park Book 400, our first crash of the day, our third caution period of the afternoon. The 6 and the 27 cars had great a great race out of the pits. Let's watch. Here comes Rusty Wallace moving out. <laughs> and Mark Martin lights up the tires as he takes off right behind Rusty Wallace. Well, there's a line down there, and the driver that goes across that first to get the position, and obviously they're all trying to get there at the same time. Under yellow for the third time this afternoon here at Michigan. We'll take another break and be back with more of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International. Back at Michigan International Speedway, we are under caution once again. And here is a Big A Auto Parts pit stop performance on the guys that are running up front. This is the way they came out of the pits, 27, 6, and 3. And you can see why. Now, the best driver time was Mark Martin at 17.6. The best crew time was Rusty Wallace at 20.1, allowing for a 40-second pit stop for Rusty, a 40.8 for Mark, and a 42.2 for Dale. We saw the six-car Mark Martin lighting the tires up, leaving the pits. Also, he was able to slow Dale Earnhardt down, making a pit stop. I think we've got it on uh, tape. We can see exactly what happened. This is Mark as he exits the pits. Well, see, he stays out against the wall, and Earnhardt can't get by him. He has to stop behind Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. Now he's able to accelerate down to his pit, but that took about two seconds. Was entering the pits, of course, as the uh, crew went to work on the Folgers Ford, the Jack Roush car. And there is Mark back out on the racetrack. 
We are still cleaning up the uh, crash down in turn number one involving Ken Reagan. The car is off of the racetrack, and we should be going back to green in just a couple of more minutes here at Michigan International. Green in the ESPN Speed World Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway, which is located about 15 miles south of Jackson, about a mile from the little town of Brooklyn, and about 70 miles west-southwest of Detroit. The green flag waves over the field, and we are back to racing on lap 111 with Rusty Wallace, followed by Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Bodine. Yes, what a great brilliant. stop that Jeff Bodine had on the, the crew head. And for more on that, let's go to Jerry. Well, they had an excellent stop, as always. But, you know, what concerns a lot of people down here who are watching Jeff Bodine and the Budweiser crew is that Richard Childress says, like, hey, these guys may be able to make it on one more school stop if we go green. We know he has to at least twice, but that 11 car gets such great gas mileage that that's not a very comforting thought, Doc. Hmm, that's an interesting situation. Well, right now, Jeff Bodine is caught behind the 89 car of Rodney Combs. <laughs> Bill Elliott way down on the inside and Dave Marcus in the middle. Now Rodney Combs moves down. Jeff Bodine passes and now Bill Elliott is caught behind Rodney Combs. Now he moves to the inside. And meanwhile, the 26 car almost oh, ran in the, the back of the 89 car. Wow. Oh, Rodney got himself a bad spot there. They're three wide headed for turn three. is out as they come back to the start finish line. Ernie Irvin will bring out another caution on the 114th lap. Wow, it's been a tough afternoon for Ernie. He began this race with such great hopes. He started third. He finished second in June here at Michigan. And he had hopes of Taking home the big prize today, but it all goes up in smoke as he brings the Kodak Bill Moldsmobile, or Chevrolet, I should say, behind the wall and pulls out of the race. So yet another caution waves over the racetrack. We'll be right back. It's a good race Chevrolet in. We are under caution here once again for the pop with the Ernie Urban car. He's taking his car to the garage area, but Earnhardt now getting service. Two reasons for this pit stop. One, they want to be able to stop the tank off in fuel so they can make one more stop. The other, apparently Earnhardt complained of the vibration of the car. The car was literally shaking himself on the racetrack. They decided to come in and change all four tires in case it possibly had a tire going down or an equalized tire. He is down and away. Back to turn one. Few chose to pit, but... Dale Earnhardt and Kyle Petty did. It looks like they're having some trouble there on the left rear of the car, but there he goes. Yeah, I would say they had some blood that's, fall that's fallen off the left rear. Crew cam being worn by one of the members of the Kyle Petty crew. Let's go to John Kernan, who's in the Barry Hudson's Rusty Wallace pit. 
Barry, you decided not to come in at this time. Uh, your window, the speculation was you might uh, be able to go with one more stop hitting here, but that's not the case for you. Not quite. Uh, we're within three or four laps doing that, and we seem to have a real good set of tires on the car, and it's sprinkling rain. So had we gone two or three more laps, it was a possibility, but our Pontiac's running good and everything's right on schedule. Depending upon the length of this caution, is there any chance you might duck in with one to go to, to top off the tank? There's a possibility. That's what we're looking at now. Of course, they don't want to uh, call their or show their hand fully here in the pits, but uh, they maybe they're thinking about it, considering coming in and topping off the tank. And you got to add into this situation the factor of weather, because as you can see, we are seeing some some uh, raindrops falling into the puddles and that may mean that whoever is leading here in the next few laps could possibly be declared the winner of the race. Well, they're not going to bring that 27 car back. I don't think so either. <laughs> it's pit stop. Well, while we continue to run under caution, we'll go back racing in just another lap. We'll take another break. We'll be back right after this message. It will in just a moment, however. Here are the top five in points and where they are running right now. Mark Martin is second. Dale Earnhardt is seventh. <laughs> now, how can Bodine and Wallace both be running third? Uh, I figured Wallace, you put that up, Bob. <laughs> Wallace is running first. The reason is because they're side by side. Okay, here we go. Back to racing. Green flag back out on the 117th lap. With sprinkles being felt over MIS. It's Mark Martin in second place. And Jimmy Spencer in the 57 Pontiac gets between Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. Spencer a lap down, I guess trying to get a lap back, trying to get in front. Look at this. Greg Sachs, five star, Ricky Grud, Red Bovine, Jerry Coates, Sterling Marlin, and Mike Chase. Ooh! Ricky Heath. Boy, he ran a shit up there, didn't he? He just slid up there. Look, look, look at this. Look at Earnhardt trying to move through the traffic. Remember, he came in for a late pit stop and now has to go through all the traffic to get back up front. He was 17th spot, but we mentioned just a moment ago, but he's chopping them off pretty fast. Falling in behind Dave Marcus, that's Hut Strickland right behind Earnhardt at number 12. in car just a few laps ago. Oh, Marlon oh, goes up yeah. and just brushes the wall trying to avoid the 10 car of Derek Coat. And Helen goes down on the inside. That was on tape just a few moments ago. It's probably no better now. Why? But... Wallace continues to lead as the battle for positions continue. That's Sterling Marlin to the inside of Bobby Hillen. for ninth position, Derry Cope, right up alongside Ricky Rudd. And Sterling Marlin takes a spot away, moves up between the eighth car of Hillen and the tenth car of Derry Cope. The orange car is Derry Cope. The yellow five is Ricky Rudd. We ride with Derry. He takes a look on the inside. And off turn two. Just behind this group is Dale Earnhardt. So uh, there we saw just in there is Earnhardt trying to catch this group. Look at all the spots being get by those cars. Yeah, he picked up about five spots if he can get around there. Bill Elliott is moving. He's trying to get by Jeff Bodine. Bill Elliott, the red nine. Jeff Bodine, the red 11. This is a race for third spot. Jimmy Spencer is not on the lead lap there in 57. So here comes... Bill Elliott and Jeff Bodine and Greg Sachs now trying to challenge Brett, uh, Jeff Bodine. And the green car, Brett Bodine, that's little brother. Jeff Bodine's little brother. They race side by side to the line at Watkins Glen a week ago for second spot. 
Jeff eventually took it. Look at these guys going way down low on the racetrack. Bill Elliott trying to break the draft of the 57 car, trying to it so that it doesn't slow down the straightaway. Tell you what, Jimmy Spencer hanging tough. Dale Earnhardt. Ooh, Earnhardt almost hits the wall coming off the second corner. Boy, he got the rear end of that car way around. He really did. Rick Wilson of Yellow 75 trying to get by Bobby Hill and alongside him. And look at Earnhardt gobble up Sterling Marlin. Well, he just ran up on him. He had dropped four or five car lengths. For the lead. For the lead. The battle at the line. They crossed the line dead even. And here comes Mark Martin to the inside trying to take over the advantage from Wesley Wallace. Into turn number one they go. It's Wallace high and Martin low. Four Sorry, again. Dave. That's okay. <laughs> Hey, that was an exciting moment. Maybe it still might be. Ford against Pontiac. They're signaling to each other, it looked like. Mark raised his hand there for a moment. He brought us in to Rusty. Oh, man, let me go on. Get out front. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Rusty didn't oblige. Rusty went in there hard, went high. Mark stays on that low groove that he's been using. Watch him come up off of that four turn. Wow, is that car working on the bottom of the racetrack, man? Yes, sir. Now he's able to pull back in front of him going into turn one. So he will take one of the he wants. Now, has he led today? Has that six car led today? He has yes. led a lap yeah, or two, yeah. but well, he moves up in front of the 27. Well, he's going to try that groove up there that Rusty had been running and uh, to see how it would work. And look at Rusty trying on the outside. Now he's going to try on the inside. That was ah. just a little bluff. Really driving that car in the corner hard, trying to use that top groove, get momentum to get by Martin, but Mark's car is really handling well. And the black three is coming. He sure is. He has moved through the traffic. Now it's within sight of the leader as we go to Pit Road and Jerry Punch. Well, the crew, what we are, Dale Earnhardt, trying to move to the front. One of the crew members just told me, said, hey, our driver Earnhardt has a lot of great qualities, but patience isn't one of them. So apparently he's not taking place from any time getting the front. He's watching the rain, the raindrop still following, although somewhat limited here. But you know something, guys, when he made the pit stop a little bit ago, and he pulled off a pit road, suddenly the rain started hitting the windshield. The conversation, and I'll paraphrase what was said on the radio at Earnhardt's crew, was something like, heck, darn, shucks, doggone it. Yeah. Yeah, that's paraphrasing, all right. <laughs> They're single file through here to the trioval. There's Earnhardt. He is ninth at the moment. Earnhardt is ninth. Rudd is eighth. Cope is seventh. Remember, Jimmy Spencer in 57 is not among the leaders. He's running with them, but isn't on the lead lap. Here comes Dave. In fact, he is two laps down. two laps down, but able, able to run with these cars. Now then, here comes the three car. And we'll show you how much race track he has between himself and the leader. There's Earnhardt, and there going now in the middle of turn number one is the leader, Mark Mark. Here are the top ten at the end of 126 laps in the 200 lap champion spark plug 400. There is Mark Martin to the left of your screen and the advantage he has over second and third position, Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott. But back of these guys, a tremendous race is going on. Here comes Morgan Shepard in the number 15 car. Also involved in this is Dick Trickle, Ike Chase, Kyle Petty, Kyle Petty, and Dave Marcus. And we watch from the Phillips 66 in-car camera carried by Dick Rickle. And just before we put the camera on them, they've been running about three wide, but all of a sudden then they got in single file. How could they do that to us? Here's the face cam on Dick Rickle. And, and the hose we see there is an air hose blowing cool air up in the face of Dick Rickle. And it's a uh, fairly cool day here in Michigan for a summer. And uh, so that... Richard Petty is behind the wall. Richard Petty has dropped out of competition. He led today for the first time since Atlanta 
in March of 1989. So it was a good day for the King, despite the fact that he won't finish. Kyle Petty right behind Dick Trickle. This is our Jason Binoculars in-car camera being carried by Kyle Petty. We're on the flat backstretch now, and here we look back from the bumper cam on Trickle's car. <laughs> Kyle going to the low side of the racetrack. Nick keeps his Trump Hardy Pontiac up high. And it looks like the grooves are dead even. Yeah, stayed about the same. Both of them went to the corner at different grooves. Trickle, despite the injury suffered at Watkins Glen, and the crash with Troy Beebe and Mark Martin will do complete duty here this afternoon. We might tell you that Troy Beebe, who was injured in that crash at Watkins Glen during the practices, has been released from the New York hospital and is back home in California. Best to Troy Beebe, who will be back in action, but probably not the rest of this year. It's good to hear that he's back home as we watch Trickle and Kyle Petty at their Pontiacs. Let's go back up front and see what's going on up there. That's Rusty Wallace, second position, and Bill Elliott and Greg Sachs. Hey, Sachs is, he is gaining on Bill Elliott. There is the interval, though, between second, third, and fourth, and the leader, Mark Martin. Mark Martin has been running well all day. Here comes Dale Earnhardt trying to get another spot. He's gotten by Ricky Rudd, now trying to get by Derek Cope, and I think he has it. That's for seventh spot. Earnhardt moves to seventh. And here comes Rick Wilson, the Dinnerbell Oldsmobile, on the bottom trying to get by all these cars. Rick's had a good run today. Now we see Greg Sachs trying to take away the third spot from Bill Elliott. Sachs has given that Tide machine a good run in substitution for Darrell. And Elliott goes a little high, didn't get traction there for a moment, and Sachs moves around, takes over third position. Greg Sachs, number 17, is now third. Bill Elliott back to fourth in car number nine. They're second, third, and fourth. Now let's take a look at the Western Auto race recap. The leader, Mark Martin, has led nine of the 130 laps. Four caution periods, total 16 laps. Still, 23 cars are on the lead lap at an average speed of 141.9497. Those that have led today include Bill Elliott, Earnhardt, Marcus, Brett Bodine, and Wallace. Also, Mark Martin, Sachs, Jeff Bodine, and the King, Richard Petty. Those out of the race, Ken Schrader was the first out, then Ed Cooper, Ted Musgrave, and the 50 car, Ken Reagan crashed. Rick Mast is out, so is Ernie Irvin and Jack Pennington. Now, the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year standings as we headed into this race, Robin Pemberton on the Mark Martin car leading the standings with Tim Brewer second, then Danny Glad on the seven car, Mike Beam for Bill Elliott, and Gary Nelson for Kyle Petty. Those are the top five in the battle for Mechanic of the Year. Well, it looks like uh, it's getting much brighter here now than it was a little bit earlier. We thought for a moment it was going to rain, although there's still a lot of clouds around. How about it, John Kernan? Is there any raindrops falling? It's looking brighter from here. Well, yeah, it is looking a lot brighter. In fact, as I look back, I can see the sun is trying to poke its face from behind the clouds. But beyond that, in the uh, far horizon, there are still some dark clouds there, so we may not be out of the woods just yet. Hmm, okay, 136 laps are coming. Look at this. Rick Wilson is about to take the spot away from Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, and Earnhardt don't lose position. He gains position, but he just may lose one now. Rick Wilson, one of the faster cars on the racetrack. Wilson is in the 75 car. Puff of smoke from Rick Wilson. Yeah. Is that tire smoke? I think it was what? tire yeah, smoke. I think it was. He drove her into that turn pretty hard. Yeah. And, and he does take the spot away. And here comes Rudd trying to take the spot so hard on losing valuable positions. Worth a lot of points. Oh, yeah. He needs the points. He goes into this race just 10 behind Mark Martin, who is the leader of the Champions Park Club 400 at the moment. So Mark is going to stretch it out. Look at this. Six cars battling for position. And that is for well, yep. Wilson and Bernard and Ron and Cope and Marlon and Hillen. 
position. He takes a spot away. Earnhardt has to pull in behind him. Here comes Sterling Marlin trying to take over to Jerry Cope. Marlin, the blue 94, Jerry Cope, the orange 10, Bobby Hill in the 8 car behind those two. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Richard Childress. Could there be a problem on Earnhardt's car, Jerry? Get him back in here. We can tighten him back up right now. He's just real loose. Kevin, he's a lot of racetrack here. When he gets traffic on the outside, he can't do it. Back out before he gets past. Six wins this year for Dale Earnhardt. And look, Brett Bodine has caught Bill Elliott and Greg Sachs. The Quaker State Buick. Carmack's pack is closed up, so we got a heck of a race going for second spot. They're the top five right there. Mark Martin with a bit of an advantage over Rusty Wallace and the 17 car of Sachs, the 9 car of Elliott, and the 26 of Bodine. The 1-900 Sports 1 number, you can dial it and hear conversations with your favorite driver and get a update on all that's going on in Winston Cup racing. It costs $1.95 for the first minute and a dollar for each additional minute. 1-900 Sports 1. Mark Martin is the leader. Second place begins, he belongs to Rusty Wallace, then Sachs, then Elliott, and the 26 car of Red Bodine currently in fifth position, and we understand that Larry McReynolds has been named mechanic of the race, John Curtis. Larry, you've been named the Western Auto Mechanic of the Race. Congratulations. Well, thank you again. I, I think that award takes the wrong name. I, I think it should be the, the team of the race, because obviously it takes the motor, it takes the driver, and it takes the car. I'm just fortunate to receive the award for the team, but we're thankful for the involvement that Western Auto has in NASCAR racing. You've worked your way up to the front. What's the strategy now? I know you've been getting really good gas mileage the last few races. Well, yeah, our first stop, our first fuel mileage today was a little bit off. We don't really know why, but right now we can for sure do it on one more stop. We just hope we get our best set of tires on there when we do make the last stop. Clay McReynolds, congratulations. Western Auto Mechanic at the race. They can make it if they make one more stop, but they got to pick that right set of tires. He said something very interesting. That set of tires, does that mean four tires on that last stop? You would think on a green flag stop that they would just change two, but I would think they would. Oh, he is all over Bill Elliott for fourth position. Brett Bodine taking the Quaker State Buick down low in the fourth turn. Right alongside Bill Elliott now as they come off the banking and into the 12 degrees of banking in the trioval. He got the position, but Elliott battles back. Brett Bodine was in fourth position when they crossed the line, but now Bill goes low in turn number one. Has to go up high to avoid Bill Venturini there in the number 35 car. Brett did a fine job of using Venturini as a pick going into, going into turn one. So there's fifth place, Bill Elliott, fourth, Brett. And now we're showing you how much racetrack there is up to the leader, Mark Martin. There he is, just coming through turn number four and into the trioval. Mark Martin, you're going for the championship, but with everything that's going on, you appear to be very calm and collected. What about that, Mark? Well, there's a lot of things that uh, that have a bearing on that. One is I'm not, uh, you know, feeling the pressure of getting fired or not having a ride next year. You know, I have a long-term contract with uh, Folgers and with, with Jack Roush. Uh, which is very comfortable. So it's the first year I've ever had that I knew for sure that I was all set. Uh, you know, we've got the guys, uh, Steve, Neil, and all the guys behind me. We're good friends. We hang out together. Uh, we spend a lot of extra time together. It's more than just business uh, at the racetrack. I mean, we are friends. Uh, I really like Jack Roush. I like working with him. And uh, we're doing all we can do. 
and that's got you know that's going to have to be good enough. Uh, and we'll just have to wait and see how it works out. At the moment, Mark Martin leads the champion Spark Plug 400, and look at this, he's the only driver with 14 top 10 finishes in the 1990 Winston Cup season. Back in September of 1986, Mark Martin won a race here in Michigan in the ASA series. I was going to say I didn't remember that, and I've never been here for an ASA race. He used to run in conjunction with an IndyCar race in September. But this is the final major race of the year here at Michigan International, the Champion Spark Plug 400. And we are 51 laps from the end of this event. Martin is leading back after this. Uh, comes into the pits very slow. He's out of gas. He is out of gas. Boy, that hurt him, didn't it? Wow, did it? Because he had to coast almost all the way around the racetrack. Yeah, that really hurt him, no question about it. Now they have to wait for they get it full of gas, and he still, I don't think, can make it the rest of the way. Still a little over 100, or a little less than 100 miles to go, and it takes a while to get the thing fired. And there we go. Finally gets the car running. He's back on the racetrack, but he has to be a lap down the field. The leader, Mark Martin, is going down the back straightaway as Rudd goes down the front. So he's a lap and a half down to the leader now. And he was in eighth position, uh, just uh, not too far behind the leader. So that costly situation for Ricky Rudd. Rusty Wallace should be coming in for a pit stop. Second place car is on pit road. Jerry Punch will call this stop by the defending champion of this race. Now Rusty pitted on lap 106. It is now lap 152. Straight the car in. Just on the brakes. They will be right to the right tire. That means he has run 46 laps. It's all they wanted to run. I would take a field. They want to see what happened to him. What happened to him. Rusty Wallace back out onto the racetrack, but Mark Martin, who is in turn number four, we thought maybe he was headed for pit road, but he stays out there. He faked me out, I'll tell you. We understand he'll be in two more laps. Well, that should ensure him of being able to go the rest of the way, but uh, Jerry said that Rusty had made 46 laps on that tank of fuel, and he had 48 to go when he came in, so that's going to run him awfully close. It'll be real close. Watching Mark Martin, the leader of the race in the Folgers Ford, as the Roush crew gets set to give him service. His final one of the race. Will it be this time or next time around? Looks like Bill Venturini, is, he just went by Venturini very slow on the bottom of the racetrack. He may be waiting to see if Venturini gets in without throwing the caution flag. Jerry Bunch, what do you think on Mark Martin? What are they going to do? Well, he pitted on lap 105. He should come down pit road this next time, which will be lap 154. That means he has run 40. He is coming down the way back. Bill Elliott's making a pit stop right now. Let's go up to John Turner. Bill Elliott pulls the force forward in. Right side tires going on, waiting to get an every drop of Unical gasoline in. 13.5 seconds, a very good pit stop. And we're waiting for Brett Lodine to come down pit road in just to bat a lap. Here comes Mark Martin off the banking in turn number four. Jerry Punch, he's headed toward you, the leader of the race. He should have no trouble whatsoever going the rest of the way. He has now run 50 laps on one tank of field. and only 45 laps of the Robin Pippen is the curve going to work on the right side of the car, changing two right side tires, hitting the windshield. Having a little trouble with the right front tire, that's when the can fuel going in. Timberton runs away, getting leverage out of the field. Timberton is sitting in there on the pit road, they're waiting for Mark Martin to get forward. He is away. That's forward to the side curve. Brett Bodine, a very good pit stop. I didn't have a clock on it, but they smoked this one. They put on right side tires and filled it completely up with the gasoline, and Brett got out in a hurry. So Brett Bodine with a good pit stop. He's back out onto the racetrack. As we watch him go out, we'll see if, if Mark Martin is going to be able to get back out in front of Rusty Wallace. There is Rusty Wallace. And right in front of him is a six car. Let's see. The six yep. is not quite up to speed. Yes, I think yep. he is. I think Mark Martin is going to be able to maintain the lead after all the pit stops are made. But here comes Rusty Wallace. That's Harry Gant there between the two. Rusty takes his Pontiac way up high on the racetrack. He's going to have to get out of the throttle here 
and try another route around Harry Gant. There was Benny, there was some smoke on the right front of that Martin car when he came in. It looked like a tremendous amount of smoke. I first thought it was great, but they it should have dissipated and went away. It was still sitting there five or six seconds, and it looked like it might be an oil leak or something like that. Something yeah. smoking. The leader is in the pits, Greg Sachs, car number 17, and for what should be his last pit stop. Greg Sachs gets the Tide machine slowed down. He is pitting near turn number one, the end of pit road. Drew going to work on the right side of that car, making sure they get it full of fuel. There's 43 more laps to go. Good 12-second pit stop by Greg Sachs and crew. Wow, that was a good pit stop. Hope they got her full of gas. I do, too. Mark Martin and Rusty Walls has already went by, so... Greg Sachs is not going to be able to get the lead via the pit stop. It's going to take him a while to get up to speed. Here comes Jeff Bodine in the Budweiser Ford number 11. He was the leader of the race, but now gives it up to make his final pit stop of the afternoon. His is the last pit down toward turn number one. Here you can see Junior Johnson on the left side of the car in the blue jacket making the chassis adjustment. Members of the crew go to work and it is full of fuel. 13.9 on the pit stop by Jeff Bodine. Dale Earnhardt is the leader of the race. He should be coming in for a pit stop soon. Well, he will be able to run a few more laps. Remember, he stopped on that caution, although he's coming in right as I say that. Well, here he comes. Well, he doesn't get off the accelerator hardly at all when he comes off the bank. And he's going probably 100 miles an hour down pit road. Now stands on the brakes. Getting the GM Goodwin Chevrolet slowed down. Hits the mark perfectly, and the crew goes to work. Changing the right sides. Also making a chassis adjustment on the left rear. We see Mr. Children, who looked like with a wrench, making an adjustment. Right sides are changed, waiting on chocolate with a gas. Cars down, and away goes Dale. 14.1 seconds. Not as fast as we have seen. Greg Sachs was faster with a 12-second pit stop. Earnhardt takes the black number three back of Michigan International Speedway. There goes Jeff Bodine. That's for about fifth or sixth spot. Now, there shouldn't be any doubt about Earnhardt being able to go the rest of the distance because he only has about 82 miles to go. He should be able to make it without any problem whatsoever. The number 15 car of Morgan Shepard picks up the lead on the pit stops. There's Bobby Hillen racing right beside him in the number 8 Snickers Buick. And that should be for the lead. Let's Hill and maybe he has made a pit stop. Okay, he has been pitted, pit so... He is just getting back in the lead lap there. Morgan Shepard remains the only one who has not pitted, the only one on the lead lap who has not pitted. He was in 17th position, but because of the pit stops, has now taken over the top position. When he does come in for a pit stop, then the lead will go back to Mark Martin. And here he and comes. Here comes Morgan. But more of the crew set to go to work on the motorcraft board. John Kernan, he's right in front of you. Morgan Shepard pulled the motorcraft board in. They have to clean some debris off the front grill. They're going around to the right side. Looks like they're putting on sticker tires. Getting the gasoline in. The first can is in. And now they're waiting for the second can to completely go in. They're still up on the track. Now he's finally down and away. Morgan Shepard lights up the tires. As he builds up speed in the motorcraft board. And uh, Kyle Petty, we understand, has not made a pit stop in the peak Pontiac. So Meanwhile, there's a blown engine up in turn four. I don't know if that's... Two tires, happen. you guys. We need to make it a good one. Listening to Gary Nelson again. Here comes Kyle. He's on pit road. Get ready, get ready, okay, go. And 
two cans of gas went in and the tires on the right side. Kyle Petty was down and away. And now we're set up for the end of the race. We have completed 163 laps. The average speed is 145.49 miles an hour. Michigan because of a crash out in turn number three. The car involved is Dick Trickle, the Trop Arctic Pontiac. Also involved in the incident was Bobby Hill, and there's tire smoke coming from his car, but he's still out there running. Here is a replay of what happened. It looked like Trickle was already in a spin. Hillen came by and clipped him as he was in the spin. Trickle backs into the outside wall once again. Already a lot of damage to the front end. And heading down into the grass area. And I'll tell you what, guys, as we look toward the north, there is rain just off of turn number three and turn number four. At least that's the way it looks to me. You can yep. see that uh, it's coming this way. So we may be close here. To the there, you can see how foggy and uh, dark it looks. When it looked like that this morning at nine o'clock, we it rained <laughs> hard. You better believe it. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's in Rusty Wallace's pit. Well, this caution may have been a break for Rusty Wallace because we've mentioned before it would have been very, very close on him making it the rest of the way on fuel. But they have to be concerned because you can look up and we are beginning to feel some more raindrops now. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Maycar and the crew now, Barry Dotson, talking about the weather. They say we have no choice. We roll the dice and come in and put some fuel in the car. Do we stay out and take a chance on running out of gas? But maybe it'll rain and stop it before we get there. So it's sort of the roll the dice and take your chances, guys. Jerry, I believe he'll stay out there and, uh, and take the chances that it's going to rain. We'll see, though, as they come around this time. There's guys are out there on pit road. They're uh, putting out the decoy. We'll see. <laughs> Here they come. All Someone's the... coming in. Well, yeah. A Alice bunch of cars. Wallace is coming in. Harry again. Wow. I don't understand that because, as they used to say down home, if it don't rain, it's going to miss a big chance. <laughs> okay, let's go to Jerry. This is for the proof. Apparently, they could not make it the rest of the way. Their calculations indicate they could make it only about 46, maybe 47 with a tailwind, but they could not go 48 laps. What would admit they were running a gap on the white flag left. The one that's come on in, top it off, and meanwhile, they'll change four tires. Left side tires going on. Baycar, pretty good luck, that back in place. John Dutton for that rear. Terry Dutton for the jack. And Rusty Wallace moves away. Jerry Punch, I'm not mistaken that that 33 car behind him didn't really get a break on this Dodge flag because I don't believe he had stopped and he got a chance to stop and he is still in the lead lap. That was a break for Harry Gantcher. Indeed, right. Andy Petrie and the crew getting excellent gas mileage in the skull car. Leo Jackson known. You ought to know, Benny. You drove for Leo Jackson. So we can get gas mileage out of these cars. And Harry Gant is always strong here at Michigan Speedway. Well, they're carrying Dick Trickle to the ambulance, but I'm not sure that it's because of this particular incident. Remember, he's injured anyway from that crash at Watkins Glen last week. That's right. He, he's getting around on crutches, and obviously he doesn't have the crutches in the race car with him. Now, here is a real-time replay from the in-car camera of what happened to Dick Trickle. There we go. Right now. It sounds like he blew a tire. It, it, it sounds like a tire came apart. You heard him hit Bobby Hillen and then back into the wall. But neither one of those tires are up. Uh, neither yep. one of those tires are Both those are up. The Trop Arctic Pontiac is damaged, however. Dick Trickle is in the ambulance headed for the hospital. We'll be right back. 66 laps. Martin, Sachs, Bodine, Elliott, and Bodine. Remember... And that's how Rusty Wallace began his drive for the championship. Right now, because of that pit stop, he has fallen to 27. Now, our helicopter is someplace up in there, but it is really hazy, and rain is falling not too far from this racetrack. Now, let's once again take a look at the crash involving Dick Trickle and Bobby Hillen. Well, they were about three wide coming in there, it looked like, and it sounded like a tire let go or something on Trickle's car, and he and Hillen touched a little bit, and around he went. We really can't. Looks like the left rear net is gone. Looks like the left rear tire is just gone. Real time in car camera replay once again. Let's listen to this incident. Here comes Dick off the second corner. Yeah, I think the left rear tire let go. Yeah, and then it hit Hill as the car went a little bit sideways with him. Jerry, was it a blown tire? 
We are told that indeed that was the case. He blew the tire and apparently Hill and uh, got into him up there, but he had nowhere else to go. The, car, the tire just let go, apparently running over something on the track, cutting a tire, we should say. The tire went down, a tough break for a driver who was hoping to have a good finish here at Michigan. Jerry, is it raining down there? Well, it's really thick. I mean, it's tremendously overcast now. It's brightened up a little bit, guys, unbelievably, but it is beginning to mist a little more. And a lot of people here don't want it to rain among those Harry Gantz crew who came in that last pit stop. Gain is way back in the back of the pack, and uh, Andy Petrie and the guys would like to have this thing finish under green. Is he someplace besides where we are? What do you mean, locking it up? <laughs> I can't even see the other side of the racetrack. <laughs> It's awful dark to the north, I'll tell you. Well, they're giving them one more lap to go, so we're going racing again. That was Andrew Petrie we saw in the, the skull mechanic, the crew chief on Harry Gant's car. On and the there, just a moment ago, there is Rusty Wallace, who is back at 17th position. Let's take a look at the big A Auto Parts pit stop performance. Ooh, 27.7 to get in and out of uh, the pits, but that's because it was under caution. Took you through 21 seconds for a total of 48.7, but again, it's all relative because it was under yellow. And Rusty Wallace has four fresh tires. That's going to be a big advantage to those in passing those cars directly in front of them. We see Dale Jarrett, the Citgo Ford, direct in front of him. Rusty Wallace has four fresh tires, so he should be able to get pretty close to the front. But unfortunately, by the time he gets there, his tires will be about worn out. Yeah, Rusty is currently in 15th position, Benny. Now, let's uh, remind you once again about our 1-900 Sports 1 number. Dial that. It costs $1.95 for the first minute and a dollar for each additional minute. Here's some comments for your favorite drivers and get a race report and all the news from Winston Cup Racing. 1-900 Sports 1. Next week, next Saturday night, as a matter of fact, we'll be in Bristol, Tennessee for one of the most popular telecasts of the year for us, the uh, race at Bristol International Raceway. Now, we do have a, a Grand National race there on Friday night. We won't televise that live for you, but uh, there are some tickets left for that event. The Winston Cup race, however, is sold out. However, you can order your tickets now for the 1991 races at Bristol. That should be fun. Always is. I'm told they're about half gone the 1991 race. Boy, I tell you. They love their racing in Bristol. It is a great racetrack, the Half Mile High Bank Facility at Bristol next Saturday night. Bush 500. Here, the green flag waves at Michigan. Well, I didn't think it was going to happen because the rain looked so close, but we are back under green. Handle full position is going on. Three wide into turn number one. Mark Martin got a great jump. Second place is Greg Sachs. Third is Brett Bodine. Then comes Bill Elliott and Jeff Bodine. Martin begins to stretch out the advantage over Greg Sachs just a little bit. And Dale Earnhardt went off behind turn one, fellas. He might have a flat tire. Let's watch him as he comes off in turn four. Came off of there pretty good, but there's a report that he might have a tire going down. Again, as he goes into turn one, he's right in the middle of a big pack of cars. He sure is. He's in heavy traffic. Right behind Davey Allison. He gets a little sideways and a little bit of tire smoke from uh, Rick Wilson. We talked about racing luck here in the Irish Hills of Michigan, and Dale Earnhardt is experiencing mostly bad luck this afternoon. I don't think he has a tire. I don't think he's a little bit behind Davey there, but uh, he might have just got in there a little too hard said, hey, I've got a flat tire, and then after he went to turn three and it stuck pretty good, he said, well, maybe it's going to be okay, so he's going to ride a lap or two here and just see. 29 laps to go. How am I doing on my subtraction? You're right. You're right. You're doing it. Hey, you used the calculator. If I can figure that out. Who was that, Ned, that taught me that calculator? I don't know the name. He gave me a can of hairspray at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he saw us, uh, I think Jerry Punch and I, up on the roof at... Uh, Dover, Delaware, and the wind was blowing about 90 miles an hour, so we figured I need a few hair that I got left, something to hold him down. Well, I tell you, I appreciate that calculator. No more subscribes and fraction mistakes for me this year. <laughs> Earnhardt now goes up high, testing Davy Allison. Sterling Marlin closes in on the back spoiler of Dale. Yeah, he's going to test Earnhardt in a little bit. And Rusty Wallace, look, he's up behind Bobby Hill on the eighth car behind Sterling Marlin. Rusty Wallace. And there's trouble.
vehicle over in turn two. Oh, several cars are involved in a crash up in turn two. Ooh, Sterling Marlin, looks like. Up against the wall, looks like the yellow hood of his car. And there's Derek Cope. Also the 48 car. That, that car being driven by Ben Hess. Hess. Ben yeah. Hess, yeah. So a three-car crash in turn number two has brought out another caution period. And there was fire in that under that 48 car. Here's a race back to the stripe. Martin Sachs, Bodine, Elliott, and Jeff Bodine cross the line in that order as Doyle Ford waves the yellow, slowing the field once again on the lap number 174. For caution here. That's amazing. Well, I don't think he was happy with the way that car was running. He thought he had a flat tower. How about it, Jerry? That's exactly it, Ned. You know, when we went to the restart a minute ago, we were listening in, and he apparently thought he had a tire going down, and he went way high, and then it turns one and two. Well, the car seemed to come back together the next lap or two, but they didn't want to take any chances. While he had a yellow flag, go ahead and come back in and get four tires. He is still very, very close, obviously, in the points race, but if you have a cut tire and smack the wall, this point battle could be over here at Michigan, so nothing left to chance. Derek Cope's car, they continue to work on it, trying to get the sheet metal from rubbing on the tire, and he was one of three cars involved in this crash. We were following Earnhardt. Now, the crash is going to happen right behind Earnhardt. There it is. Well, we see the 94 car back in the wall. Here comes the 48. He spins to try to avoid the 94, and along will come Derek Cope. I guess we're throwing up in there, and Cope is going to get the 48 car. Now from inside Gary Cope's car. Hey, you see him spin in front of him. Then it goes blank. He can't see for a moment. He goes down to the inside, all the way to the inside, and apparently got his left wheels down on the grass there, maybe, or certainly on the flat part of the racetrack, and caused him to spin around. I think the 48 car yeah. spun to come down and nail the 10 car as Derek was going by trying to avoid the accident. Well, the 48 car of Ben Hess was the only one that was not able to make it back to the pit area. Derek Cokes did, and so did Sterling Marlins. But the 48 car of Ben Hess is on the hook at the back stretch as they clean up the debris over there just off of corner number two. That's our sixth caution period of the afternoon. We're 25 laps from the finish. A lot of haze and foggy skies over Michigan International Speedway, but I believe we're going to get this thing in because we've only got 23 more laps to go. And tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time Live, we'll have the New York Mets against the San Francisco Giants on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. The Mets and Giants at 8 o'clock tonight. Well, Derek Cope was involved in that crash, and they did a little fine-tuning on the car last time he was in. Boy, all that time in the wind tunnel, getting the aerodynamics just right. So the car will uh, go through the air cleanly, and look what they do. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, this car did go to the wind tunnel. The first time that a Bob Whitcomb-owned car has ever been in a wind tunnel, this was the car. And look what poor Buddy Parrott does to it. Makes a sledgehammer to it. Well, he had to get that sheet metal away from the tire, and that's the easiest way to do it. Mark Martin is at the front of the field as they clean up the crash over in turn number two involving Ben Hess and Derrick Cope and Sterling Marlin. Well, I think it's about time for the hat of the week as we see some multicolored hats uh, scattered throughout the grandstand. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the top 20 now. We're still under caution as the... Uh, Track is being cleared over in turn number two. There's a top five. Now, we'll have to go back to green. To Next time around, we should be going back to green as the safety vehicles uh, go back to their assigned positions. Now 11 through 15. Alan Kowicki, the pole sitter of the race, back in 13th. The Unical money will not be won today. And 16 through 20. Look, Dale Earnhardt is back in 17th because of that pit stop that he made just a few minutes ago. Eric Cope, despite being involved in that crash, is in 20th position. You know, Mark Martin might have might have led enough laps today to get the bonus points, the five extra bonus points. Uh, we'll check on that. Well, that would be worth something. 21st, by the way, a lap down is Dave Marcus, then Sterling Marlin. Let's take a look at the top ten in points just to uh, bring you up to date on how they stood coming into this event with Dale Earnhardt 10 behind Mark Martin and Jeff Bodine 120 behind, Wallace 260 behind, and 
Morgan Shepard, 200, rather 321. And there the second five is Kyle Petty, because of his misfortune at uh, Watkins Glen last week, was moved down to sixth position. Schrader dropped out very early in the race, and Ernie Irvin has not had a good day. Ricky Rudd also will suffer because of his misfortune here in Michigan today. And folks, don't let him trick you. He had all those numbers written down. He didn't subtract from his head. <laughs> On lap 178, the green flag comes back out, and we are racing once again. Okay, Dale Earnhardt has led 49 laps, and so has Mark Martin. So, if Mark Martin gets by the next lap, he will take his five bonus points. He just won as win the race, of course, he the most laps. And now, if 17 car were to take over, Mark have a problem, Mark could still be the... He's two laps down. Damage on the car because of his incident with Dick Trickle a few laps ago. Well, Mark made it back, so he is has led more laps than anyone. There's Rusty Wallace down on the inside of Rick Wilson trying to come back up through the pack. He's going to get jammed in behind the eight car if he's not careful, but he'll just probably make it three abreast down the back. Brent Bodine, which just an excellent run here today, running in third position the moment just ahead of fourth place Bill Elliott. And he's third last week at Watkins Glen. There is Mark Martin, the leader. And we'll let the cars go through the frame and show you where Dale Earnhardt is as he is trying desperately to move through race cars that he's coming up on heavy around Here comes Rusty Wallace to the front. He's gotten by Jeff Bodine in number 11 and now has his sights set on Bill Elliott in number 9 as they go down the back stretch. Those pressure tires that Rusty Wallace has on his Pontiac making a difference here in the last few laps of the race. Less than 20 laps to go. Now Brett Bodine and Bill Elliott become, become involved in a tussle for that third position. Elliott looking high, looking low as they come through the trioval. And the crowd is standing. No one is seated as they now turn their attention to turn number one to see if Elliott can take over third from Brett Bodine. Or if Rusty Wallace can take over the spot from Bill Elliott. Side by side, Rusty Bill Elliott literally door handle to door handle. Now Rusty drops by just a few feet. Rusty Wallace has. Oh, and Michael Waltrip is smoking and dropping to the apron of the racetrack in the third turn. Michael Waltrip was running in 15th position on the lead lap. But trouble has erupted in the Maxwell House Country Time Pontiac. racetrack between Earnhardt and Martin. I tell you what, Rusty Wallace, folks, if we can get by these next two cars, the green car, Brett Bodine, and the orange car, Greg Sachs, he might give Mark Martin a run to the checkered flag. But he now is clearly the fastest car on the racetrack. There's new tires. Let's do it. Right behind Brett Bodine, Rusty will take the high line through the first and second turns. Let's see what happens as he, as he comes off the second turn as here comes Martin and Sachs. And now Greg Sachs has Rusty Wallace in his rear view mirror. Ooh, Rick Wilson hits the wall coming off turn two. But Sachs, wow, there was a lot of traffic behind him. That was but apparently he did enough damage that he's going to have to come into the pits. He might have cut a tire down or something of that nature, but he's going to have to come into the pits after a great run here today. One of the best runs he's had in a while with the Denabelle Westmobile. Wilson gets the car slowed down. His best finish was fifth this year in Bristol. Here's a replay. Watch the cars. They come off the second corner. 
Oh, yeah. He and Jeff Boy. Bodine get together. Yeah. It looks like just before the contact with the wall. He took a full impact there on the right side of the car against the back stretch wall. And Wilson, after they check it over, send, they send him back out there. And it doesn't look like they changed the tires. Looks like the same tires he hit the wall with as he goes back up. Now Rusty Wallace is third. Brett Bodine fourth. Bill Elliott fifth. And Jeff Bodine and Ricky Rudd. And fellas, the black flag was being given this time to Brett Bodine as he came around. Said we got a tail pipe or a header pipe or something wow. that's loose on the Quaker State Buick. How about it, Jerry Punch? That is indeed what the problem is. There, the tail pipe actually is the pipe, the exhaust pipe is dragging the track just in front of the left rear tire. He will have to come in and make the up schedule stop. Apparently, Larry McReynolds here, previous case in the NASCAR official on pit road, but they will make him come in and they will wire this tail pipe up. It'll be a tough break for the Kenny Bernstein on Quaker State Buick team. Well, I should say, he slows it down and drops down off the banking, heads for pit road. Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Buick coming in after being black flagged and relinquishing fourth position. Another well, driver had a great run here today and uh, had some of that luck that you talked about at the top of the show. Fastened up on the, probably to the roll bar just inside of the door. <laughs> All right, Mark Martin continues to lead and completes 187 laps. There are 13 to go in the Champion Spark Plug 400. Champion Spark Plug 400 with 12 laps to go. Here are the top five in points, and here is where they are running. Martin, the leader. Earnhardt is eighth. Jeff Bodine is sixth. Rusty Wallace third. And Morgan Shepard is ninth. Bob, they don't have three guys in two guys two in third, guys in third. <laughs> or three guys in fourth. Well, if Mark Martin should hold on for the win, it'll be his second of the year. He won the race, of course, at Richmond, a rather controversial win. Last time here in Michigan in June, he finished in fourth position. That's a big, big win for Jack Roush's car owner, whose business is on down near Detroit. There's Davey Austin and Jeff Bodine racing for position. That's for six spots. But Jack Roush, his business is about 60, 70 miles away from here. 600 employees. Probably a lot over here today. Root for the boss. Good battle here for six spot as Jeff Bodine and Davey Allison are wheel to wheel. You may be able to hear a little bit different sound from that number 11 car as it goes uh, through turn number one. They're using 180 degree headers on the car as they did in a race earlier this year, and it sounds a lot different than any other V8. Yeah, it sounds like a V6, really. Mm -hmm. Ten laps to go. Ten to go for Mark Martin. So we watch this race for six. Here is Martin. Moving into the fourth corner. There is the interval he has on Greg Sachs, and Darrell Waltrip has to be feeling good at his home in Tennessee. If he's watching this race, there is Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott and Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd must have gotten a tremendous break and all the cars pitted before the car spray came out of something because that there's Brett and Brett, Jeff Bodine and Davey Allison. They're sixth and seventh. And then eighth position belongs to Taylor and Hart. Here he comes. now with Mark Martin leading and Dale Earnhardt eighth. Now there are eight more laps to go. Mark Martin with a rather comfortable lead at the moment. His nearest competitor is Greg Sachs, but he is we that far see. behind. Yep, that's pretty far behind. Just eight laps to go. In stock car racing, that is a long ways behind. And there is the race for third spot. Rusty Wallace with the fresh tire. He got there. He didn't move forward anymore. Yep. Bill Elliott fourth. Ricky Rudd in the yellow car in fifth place. Rudd trying to make a move down on the inside of Bill Elliott. 
off of turn four. Ooh, he gets up beside oh, of it. Big touch. Rusty, yeah. Rusty Wallace smoked the tires pretty good. Ooh, that third fourth corner the last time. Now Rudd heads to the outside in the effort to pass Bill Elliott. Does he have the momentum build up coming off the second corner? I believe he does. Ricky Rudd for the moment has four, but no, nope, here comes Bill Elliott battling right back on the inside. And that's just what Rusty Wallace likes. For them to be battling, that'll allow him to pull away a little bit. This is a race for fourth spot. And here's a race for six right behind them. Bodine and Davey Allison. Hey, that was a great comeback by Rudd after running out of gas. Yep. Although he had some cautions after that, so. What L. Wilson and the crew have done a good job in keeping him up there after starting. As Danny said, back in the third time. And Ricky was, of course, the winner of the race last weekend on the course of Watkins Glen. Meanwhile, he is still side by side. What's this, two laps now they've been side by side? At least. And Ned was correct. If one of these guys could get in front of the other, I think they might be able to race with Rusty Wallace. But... Ooh. Oh, Bill almost ran in the side of the five car that time. And it's allowing Davey Allison, who has now moved away from Jeff Bodine, to move up on them. Close in, indeed. Five laps to go. Five laps to go for Mark Martin. I don't say too much, but Greg Sack can get a little bit closer for him. You know, when Davey Allison came in for a stop early in the race, they had the hood up on that car. Yeah, I thought it was all over for David. They worked and worked on the Elliott swaps the position again with Rudd, with now less than five laps to go. Rudd comes back on the outside. Once again, they're going to be side by side, exit in turn four, coming down for the start finish line. Closes in also. They're and Morgan Timber, Kyle Petty, Al Quick, their pole sitter. And all those guys are on the lead lap. So they're on the same lap, I should say. So they're all back in the position. Have Dale Garrett right behind that. He's, he's gaining on that three cars, but uh, he had some trouble getting back from that car. But there's Mark Martin just riding along. No trouble right now for him. Three to go. Three laps to go. Here are the intervals once again. Back to third place. Greg Sachs continuing to hang in there in second position, but I really don't think he's going to have enough to close in on Mark Martin. Might have closed just a little bit, Bob, but I think Mark Martin is really taking it easy right now, knowing that he only has a couple of more laps to go. And folks, when we do victory lane today, you may see the happiest race car driver of your life <laughs> if Mark Martin was to win this thing. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth right here. This is going to be a shootout right down the oh, end. It sure is. Look at Davey Allison in the Haviland Ford. Take it to the low side. Two laps to go. Allison and Run are wheel to wheel. Two different grooves. Davey Allison running on the bottom. Ricky Rudd on top. The Rudd gets the momentum off the corner. Maintains the position. This time down, Mark Martin will receive the white flag. Indicating one more lap to go. Here it is. Mark Martin gets the white flag. One more tour. Oh, and Kyle Petty is spinning. And Jimmy Means stops behind him, and the yellow flag is out. This race is going to end under caution. But the leader did not take the caution flag, so it will be a dash to the finish line. There is Martin holding the advantage down the back stretch. He heads for turn number three. That's why spotters are so important because there is someone up high. Visibility all the way around the racetrack telling Mark Martin, the track is clear. Come on. 
And there's the second place car on the right side of your screen. That's Greg Sachs. But here comes Mark Martin through the trioval. Mark Martin wins the champion Spark Plug 400, the second Whitson Cup victory of his career. Look at this battle. Wallace, Elliott, and Rudd in that order. And then comes Davey Allison. Greg Sachs was second, but then Rusty Wallace finished third, followed by Elliott, Rudd, Davey Allison, Jeff Bodine, and Dale Earnhardt. Let's great punches with Steve Meal. The other crews are coming by to congratulate. Here's Harold Elliott, Barry Dawson, May Carr, some of the Wallace crew coming by. Everyone congratulating you on an outstanding effort. Congratulations. Well, I had a pair of sunglasses. I wore at Richmond, and I lost them. Hadn't been wearing them since. I put them back on today, and we won again. So we're real pleased for Folgers, Valvoline, Ford Motor Company, all the people at ECS Routes. Had a good day, led a lot of laps, made a few points. We're just tickled to death. Now, what did you tell him about 10 laps ago? You were joking a little bit, saying, if you win this thing, we're not going to victory lane. Well, we had trouble at Richmond, you know, and I just want to make sure we've won this thing. We're not going to get too excited until we go through inspection, but we're as legal as can be. We won this thing. Steve Mill, congratulations again, and the Folgers team will head to victory lane. Mark Martin getting his second win of the year. Relatively easy victory over Greg Sachs. The real battle was for third spot, and here's the way it was decided as Rusty Wallace led Bill Elliott and Ricky Rudd off the fourth corner. Watch him dice for position. Elliott tried to go outside and take the spot, but Rusty held on to third, and he was able to hold off Ricky Rudd for fourth position. So Mark Martin has pulled the Folgers Ford into victory lane. We'll be back to talk with him right after this. Jerry Punch. And Mark Martin congratulating his crew, Robin Pemberton, Steve Mill. I tell you, they are all smiles here. Mark, congratulations on a great effort. Oh, man, it was great. First of all, I want to say I wish you were here, Arlene. But golly, thank, you know, thank God for these guys, the Folgers, Valvoline, Ford Motor Company. It was a great day. Uh, I had more horsepower than anybody out there and a great handling car. Any close calls at all? Well, I don't know. It, after the second, you know, about after halfway through, I don't think I could lose unless something went wrong. Man, this thing was fast. And uh, the boys, you know, I mean, it, it handled so good, it made me look real good. <laughs> an outstanding crew, an outstanding day here, Steve Mill. And here's a man that made it happen. Let me just say, Jack, Jack, I know you got to be happy. Not far away, Livonia, Michigan, your headquarters. Yeah, we're real good. To, uh, glad to do close to home here. We couldn't be happier about it. You know, uh, we uh, had bad luck last weekend. Had a flat tire at a bad time. We hadn't had our share of flat tires this year. We sh I was sure sweating them that last time. We had several runs on the tires. They were good Goodyear tires today, and the Thunderbird really ran super. Jack Roush and his driver, Mark Martin, along with team manager Steve Mill, Robin Pemberton, and the crew all celebrating here in victory lane, the second win of the year. All right, thanks, Jerry. Congratulations to Mark Martin. Here's a look at the top 20. Greg Sachs was second, followed by Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott, and Ricky Rudd, finishing 6 through 10. Davey Allison, Jeff Bodine, Dale Earnhardt was eighth, followed by Morgan Shepard and Dale Jarrett. Then 11 through 15, Alan Kowicki, our pole sitter. Butch Miller with a good run. Harry Gant, after coming back from broken shock absorber, finishes 13th, followed by Terry Labonte and Hut Strickland. 16 through 20, Kyle Petty, who spun on the last lap. Then Brett Bodine, a great run until the tailpipe dragged around the track. Dave Marcus, Derek Cope, and Sterling Marlin. There are your top 20 finishers. Now the points in Winston Cup competition. Mark Martin stretches his advantage over Dale Earnhardt. However, the other members of the top five remain in the same order. At 8 o'clock tonight here on ESPN, join us for Sunday night.